Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Welcome to Unclicked. We're back. <laughs> this is Ryan Nyquist. This is Mike Escamilla. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hey, how I, are you? I am Ryan Fudger. It's super weird you that are. I, I made you guys drive to me. That is unbelievable. Big time. That, that is, is, I feel, big time. I feel like uh, super special. Between the two of us, there's probably going to be 10 hours of driving to get here. And back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Close. So thank you. You're and uh, Dennis is not here. This is this is this that's is rooftop. The, that's the new Dennis. This is the this is the co co host. It's the old Dennis. And and this is so for for the for the people, we're gonna see a little bit more of rooftop because he's gonna come and help out and interview some of the older guys. So is this kind of like seasoned a, is the word I'd like to use? Is this like use? an interview? Is this like a like is this like he, he's yeah, this is my tryout? Right yeah. This, this is his tryout. tryout. Yeah, this is his tryout for the gas and just that for, I'm paying. Just for the just for the future, it's seasoned, <laughs> not old. Seasoned. Seasoned. Yeah, Chris. Ryan, you're one year away from being seasoned, by the way. Uh, that happens at 44. 44. 44. Did not know that. Yeah. yeah. So cuz you're no longer 43. So See, you're too seasoned. old to even know what that means. I know you're too 43. Young. Oh, you do. I do. Oh, see, maybe you're fucking seasoned now. That's NorCal. That's NorCal. I don't know if that's it. that might hella be NorCal. 100%. Yeah. 100% hella NorCal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Episode two of Nyquist. We said, oh, we'll do a follow-up tomorrow. It's Too been easy. like a year and a half. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so <laughs> welcome <Quick> back. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one thing we're not going to talk about really today is the Olympics. Because okay. that, one, that one dominated the last one. So please go back and listen to that podcast. There was, yeah. the, there was the heyday and a lot of talk about Mira. But I don't feel like we really got to talk about you. That's, so, I mean, all that's a big part of. I might I have so. one or two True. Olympic questions, but they're they're not. They're just they're about you in the Olympics, not yeah the Olympics. It yeah. was such a fresh topic back yeah. then. So, and that's what the that's what you were in town for. So it yep. dominated the, the yeah. And I, so. honestly, I, I I don't mind talking about it because I feel like there's still a lot of um, people out there that don't understand the process. And you know, now that we have an Olympics under the belt, it's like oh, like I understand it better too. Yeah. So. Yeah, whatever. I'm 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 down. Open book. Let's Open go. Open book. Open book. Uh, Los Gatos, California. Los Gatos. Let's talk about a, a video called "Sick." Oh, sick jumping or sick. hardcore sick or, or sick too one sick. or too sick. Too sick. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what was the scene growing up like? Where did you Where did you come from? What What birthed you into BMX? So uh, we're doing Northern, an actual origin story. Barely. Yeah. Oh. So Northern California. Wolverine. I grew up in a town called Los Gatos, which is just outside of San Jose, which is just outside of San Francisco. Um, and I grew up riding dirt at this place called Calabasas and very famous place. Yeah. A lot of people went through there. Uh, Wilkerson was like, you know, fairly regular guys, Garcia brothers, uh, Chad Keggy, um, Cecil Johns. Like there was a huge race side too, like Charles Townsend. Um, just a lot of like heavy hitters from that area. And so that's where I kind of grew up riding and, uh, dirt is where I started with eventually got into ramps with, uh, Oscar Gonzalez's backyard mini ramp. Um, that was actually my first real ramp that I rode. Um, and so like the scene was awesome, real strong scene. When you say trails, is this like the fly out jump type thing? There were, it... there were those, there were some doubles, God, there were step double. ups. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a mix of all of it, which was awesome place to learn how to jump. Like honestly, like, you know, what better place I mean, than to have like a fly out it, and then it was a, a West double. coast dirt jumping area. Yeah. Yeah. West well, coast I say, yeah. I say trails, like it wasn't like Posh. East coast trails yeah. going through the woods. Like that actually terrified me when watching them on videos because it just looked like you didn't know where you were jumping like, everything's <laughs> ivy and grown over and real green and meanwhile we're like in a dust bowl like you know like a drought that's lasted 100 years and dirt you, that is so hard <laughs> oh it, like cement hard but then just dusty so yeah. like it's like basically like riding on like a dusty cement floor and yeah. sliding out and just so i mean it wasn't ideal but it was i mean amazing you it, know like grew up right like there were, I feel like every spot like that in California, all the jumps were exact. It was the, every spot was the same. Well, you could, you, you could only build so much yeah. with like just dust, yeah. you know, like and like very dig. little There's water. a lot of lip jumps because you could just dig them into already pre existing hills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You that's know? that's what Calabasas was. It was a creek bed. And okay. so you had these like, you dive in, you dive out. And, and that was, that was where we learned all our stuff, you know? That's, yeah. Yeah. So really, really awesome scene. I, I loved it. Um, how old were you when you started going to Calabasas and what age were you when you started sort of you and Cameron Birdwell and Keggy and Joey all because they Joey's a little bit older than you mm -hmm. and um, but you, the rest of you three you were all pretty close. Mm -hmm. When did that start being where you guys were like a you're riding together? You I know, feel like 1995 ish. So like 
14, 15, 16. Um, that's like the first time I actually rode with Joey. And I like that was huge because Joey had some notoriety. You know, like he was was, he, was he already yeah, Schwinn was Joey? No, it was pre, it? pre Schwinn, but yeah. he was he was like the like the flying Garcia brothers. Like, okay. you know, it was like those guys, like you knew about them. And Jimmy was like, you know, Jimmy was super talented too. Like, you know, could dirt jump, but also both of them were just naturally talented, fast riders. Yeah. Um so Joey came to Calabas one day and like we were riding and you know, I was doing my thing and he was doing his thing. And I just remember he was like, yo dude, do you want to come spend the night? <laughs> and I was like, Oh my God. Yes. Uh, <laughs> let me go to the fire station. Cause they have a, a, you know, like a payphone over there and call my mom and let her know that Joey Garcia invited me to his house to we're spend the night. Over. And I was like, I'll be right back. And just, I remember like, you know, call collect, He's like give you a click call from uh, Ryan. And so I was like, okay, What's up? And I was like, hey, you're never going to believe it. Joey Garcia, he's, he said I could spend the night at his house. So what do you say? She's like, where does he live? I was like, Gilroy. She's like, that's like 45 minutes an hour away. No. And I was like, <laughs> what? No, no, no. Mom, you don't understand. Mom, Joey Garcia. <laughs> and she's like, I don't care who it is. Like, you don't know. I don't know his mom. Then it's just like, but yeah. So Actual was, logic. Yeah, yeah. I have to go back and be like, yeah. Joey, I can't spend the night. <laughs> No way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I fanboyed out hard, hard. So hard. But uh, I mean, like, that was kind of the beginning of like, oh, man, like, these guys are awesome. You yeah. Know? And then, yeah, like, Birdwell, Chris Bryant, Butthead, like, all these mm -hmm. dudes. Like, we had, like, such a strong scene. Like, it was really cool. And then that eventually morphed into what was, like, the San Jose Ramp Club. Yeah. And that was, like, the next stage of that. Before that, but you were, before the Ramp, uh, the ramp Club, were you sponsored by Bond Tracker before that? Yeah. Or four, four bikes, maybe? Four bikes. Wow. Yeah, four bikes, maybe? That was That's my, a NorCal company, right? That yeah. was. Yeah. So, um, it was four bikes first, right? Yeah, so this guy, Brad Hodges, uh, he started a, a company called Four Bikes. And I never actually had a bike, but he gave me T-shirts and bought ads in magazines. Yeah. I remember. Because Gary, Gary Nesbitt, who used to live I used to live with him, he rode for Four Bikes. No like, way. Way, way later. They only made, yeah. That's why they called it Four Bikes. He made four of them. They only made four <laughs> yeah. of them. That's why you forgot one. Yeah. So you, were like, the, that was, you were the 15 That member. was actually my first magazine, like, ever. Like, I, I think it was a nothing, and I had, like, a ponytail. Well, and, like... That was, was your like, first magazine photo? Yeah. In, yeah. in, 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 in an way? ad? Um, I think it was... It might have been... Ooh, either BMX Plus or Ride. Wow. You don't remember what your first photo was? I, I don't. Wow. I don't. How had big so many of a star do you need to be yeah, yeah. Right. to not remember well the the, we, we, we glanced we, 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 we glanced over but this big oh yeah. <laughs> and yeah i brought some goodies and this big yeah those are just things i carry around with me yeah. at all times yeah yeah so it's, it's, ask, it's like, so funny you, you happen to have these yeah random yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy because you're going to be the second action figure i saw that yeah who else has one chad curly chad i should bring you i think i have one maybe i'll bring you one yes you should chad is kind of well, Chad's looks like a little homie. Yeah, do you remember sick. those? No, do you remember the toys, little homies? <laughs> I do actually. Yeah. I don't remember those. Um, you, look like, you know what the weird thing is? Is you don't look like this. Looks like Adam Banton who <clears throat> that might maybe work a forklift. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that guy, I don't, I can't remember where he came from, but he was sitting on a uh, sink, my kitchen sink, because I don't know, like it, that's the kind of thing that just yeah. happens to pop out yeah. every once in a while. But um. You gave me zero guidelines. You said bring something for the wall. This so I is, brought like yeah. trading cards. This is perfect. Yeah. I am and not. I am. I am. Couple posters. I am completely so. pleased. By I like it, that so you brought thank you. Uh, different things oh, from all eight. And this. Here. Oh my gosh. What? This, 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 this Whoa, was, I want that. Yeah. So Wait. this was from the Mia Ham uh, <laughs> Celebrity Soccer Challenge. <laughs> Oh, I was sick. thinking. I was thinking it was like a OG, like this like from this is Anaheim CBC. Yeah, this is like Absolutely my not. second no, contest is, ever or something. Uh, oh, match Mia Ham. Yeah. All right, yeah, sick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Super fun. You know, I like, you know, I like that you're from the era that you we got to do all these really dumb things. A lot of really like. I mean, it was wild. I remember they invited me, and I was, and I I grew up playing soccer, so I was like, yeah. heck yeah. At one point, you were gonna quit bikes to ride soccer. Uh, I thought about it. Yeah, I thought about it. Um, but it was it was. Was that before or after you started getting stuff? That was bef well, so before. I, I that, that was my first love of soccer, and then uh, I played into high school, and then right around sophomore year, junior year, like I started kind of gaining momentum mm. with like bike riding and going to con like junior year. Were you doing a contest in high school? Junior year, I think I did a couple. It was mainly local, and then senior year is like I started traveling. Uh, I got sponsored by 
Haro. Um, no, actually, no, sorry. Senior year was still Bontrager. Yeah. So, I got, like, that was a local hookup. Uh, I, I remember Cruz. the first time I saw you. I remember, first, my first memory of you is Seal Beach. Seal content. Beach. Yeah. You had that ugly Bontrager, yep. like, Rastafarian yep. jersey, jersey or bike. Jersey. Turquoise yeah. helmet. And so, you had no pegs. And I was like, who is this dude? So, yeah. So, just uh, history of Bond Trigger was they, they were this mountain bike company that made custom, like, really high-quality frames out of Santa Cruz, California. Mm -hmm. And that was just over the hill for me. So, they got uh, word that Chris Bryant and I, through the sick video guy, mm -hmm. Scott Stanton, mm -hmm. he hooked it up for us. And then they started uh, sending us to contests, like, giving us parts. Like, they had an account at the local bike shop, and we were just, like, allowed to go there and just go shopping Ooh, for, like, awesome. wheels. Oh, it was insane. Um, and so, yeah, so Bond Trigger was like that, that first sponsor where it like really started happening and they were sending me to like, you know, events like Seal Beach, mm -hmm. Chicago, New York, like all the BS series stuff. And chicken, so, chicken was, jam. That, but chicken jam. That was, uh, mm -hmm. you were, oh, you were in Chicago. <laughs> you were in Chicago? <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> the gears on, are turning. Yeah. You're still on Bond Trigger in Chicago. Yep. Yep. I won that contest. Oh, do you know why I won? Um, because because everyone good was at the Olympics. Paid the judges. No, know. everyone good was at the Olympics. <laughs> Oh, doing, doing that the demo. Yeah, doing, doing the, the demo. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's what's so crazy. It's like people, you know, the Olympic stuff is, is, is fascinating because you're like, oh, like, how's that happen? It's like, dude, like decades of 97, trying to get in. Yeah. 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 That would have been, yeah, 97 or, nine, yeah, 97. Maybe. Yeah. So anyways, I, I did I did some traveling with Bond Trigger and then eventually uh, I got a deal with Haro in 97. And you were in high school with Haro? Haro? So high you school. were traveling, yeah. you were traveling riding contests in, in high school. Yeah. Were your parents so, going with you? Um, no. Scott went with me. Oh, okay. Scott Stanton went with me yeah. on a couple. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the same for me. Yeah. Same? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I it's hard to imagine these days. A different different yeah. time. There, I, there was, like, I, parents I, let you do stuff. I, and, and like, it wasn't, there was no TSA. Like, I remember, like, <laughs> yeah. vividly having flights yeah. where there was no secure, like, no yeah. metal detectors yeah. and stuff. Like, yeah. so. Your parents totally walk you right day. to the gate. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so back to the soccer thing, there was like a gradual shift of, I love soccer, but then I started loving BMX. And then it was like, soccer was way up here. And then slowly, like BMX took over. Yeah. And so my, the thought of me like going to college and playing soccer was like, Oh, well I really like this. And but you did try started, to go to college, right? You went, I did. You did. You did Bispo, right? I did. I went to Cal Poly San Luis Bispo yeah. for two semesters and, uh, had a great time. I pretty much drove every single weekend back to Northern California to ride, to ride. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like a three hour drive. So it wasn't like crazy, but like every weekend because there wasn't a lot out there to ride. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I, I don't really want to be here. So like I didn't, truly experienced like college like most people did um i just wanted to ride and what so, were you going to college to for mechanical engineering and that's what that's what shade does right uh yeah. he's actually a aerospace engineer which encompasses mechanical engineering oh okay and he's currently trying to break the land speed record or something he's on a motorcycle? breaking all kinds of stuff yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. things records <laughs> yeah um he's a whole other yeah, yeah so um so yeah but this I mean, we're going off. Of no, it's fine. This, this is welcome really to the podcast cool experience for me because like going to a soccer tournament with like legit pros was like, I was able to kind of like be on the same field and then, you know, like people You're say like you pro go athlete like, on the field. Yeah. With a knee that popped out. That's what I was going to say. It was like, how many, how many people without ACLs were yeah, there? Yeah. I, I scored a goal and I was so stoked what? because the guy, one of the guys that was a legit pro came up to me and was like, that, that holds up. That was a sick shot. And I was like, Phew made it just Sweet. one yeah thank you like, like thank this. you so much that was like, your 900 <laughs> that was it right and i was like oh my gosh thank you so much but then yeah but it was like i was like dude this is awesome but so many crazy experiences so many things that were just popping up and i, I don't know if people have those same I, opportunities i, I, I don't know because don't. i like i'd like to say they don't but who i have no idea yeah. but i feel like back then there was a lot of i would see stuff of you or whatever was going on where you're like well this is you're doing these weird things you don't think about much of them then mm -hmm. But you're like, I did a bunch of weird stuff. Like yeah. people just got invited to weird events. Like yeah. That. yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's I did real. Some, something for Mervins. Do you remember Mervins? Mervins. I did I something do. for women with Mervins and like Christina Yamaguchi, and and Nadia Komanich. You know who that mm -hmm. is? She's like, you're a very good bike rider. I did a vert demo, which means it was the worst bike rider in my was, life. And <laughs> she she yeah, shot her. She, yeah, but she, you know, it's like she made these, her shot right there. Things on. that like you go to and you're like, what? Yeah. Is going on? It, I mean, it was just like. BMX freestyle was on the come up and people wanted to be a yeah. part of it. Yeah. And so they, you had people coming out of the woodwork and be like, Hey, can we do this? You know, like, can we, can, can we arrange this? And you're like, I, I, I think we can. Was, so you moved from NorCal once you left college, were you in college when you got on Haro? Yeah. Oh, you were actually at college. <laughs> yeah. Was how, college. how pissed were your parents that you left college? Um, 
How hard is it to get into that college? Is that a hard college yeah, to get into? Yeah, it wasn't easy. It's expensive college, I assume. Um, it wasn't in the UC system, so it wasn't as expensive. Okay. So it's it was a it's California Polytechnical University is like the long name for it. But I applied for like the fall or whatever is normal. Mm -hmm. Didn't get accepted, and then reapplied for the summer. And so I technically didn't have like the senior year summer, but I yeah. was but I got accepted through that process. Yeah. And then proceeded to go immediately to the San Diego X Games, where I probably saw you. Mm -hmm. um, you signed a photo. Thank yep. you. Yep. And then, uh, and then I was taking one class, and that one was class that was bowling. Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. You went to oh, college. So you went to year. college for minute mechanical engineer and took bowling the class. The first because because I because I got it for summer, and yeah. so I was like, oh well. So I asked my uh, bowling professor, uh, <laughs> how much school can I miss? And he told me. And so I basically took off and went to the San Diego Air Exams. I came back and, you know, like I lived in the dorm. I basically met my roommate, moved in, and then left. And then came back, like, I think it was like two weeks later. And everybody was already hanging out and had partied. And, you know, everything. Yeah. And I walked in and everybody thought I was just visiting. And they were like, oh, like, what's up? And, and I was like, oh. I'm actually, I live yeah. here. And they were like, oh, well, random, where you been? And then, of course, it's like, oh, I went down to San Diego and like I, X Games. And they were like, wait, you, were, you went to the X Games? How was it? I was like, oh, it's cool. And they're like, like, what do you mean you went to the X Games? I was like, well, I was in the X Games. And then that was a year where my wall. like, are you a street loser? Yeah. But like, <laughs> but like, you know, like the dirt jump contest. Like, I yeah. Got, yeah. Uh, Is that the one, the three, the three downhill? Yep. Yeah. And like, I cased and like my wallet came out and I had like a chain wallet and threw it. And so, but they remembered all that. And then instantly it was like, what dude you're in the yeah, dude i saw that i saw that i saw you and they just freaked out and so instantly i was like oh well i, I guess i didn't really skip a beat there yeah. i'm, I'm yeah. in now you yeah. know all the all the homies like me but um but yeah so my my college was, was short-lived i left there with a whopping 0. 0.78 grade point average Ooh. all wow. right so i was very committed that's an f yeah uh so you failed bowling that's a no so that was <laughs> I did well in bowling. All right, um, but it was after when okay. I actually took like regular Real classes. Real classes, and stuff yeah. And missed like finals and. Uh, another... What was the kicker that made you go? This I gotta stop. Um, was it a contest? Was it just like you just realized this was a? No, nah, well, uh, there was there charades. Was one, what you there were was doing? one contest where like I had to bring all this like um, like drafting equipment, and I was supposed to like draw something uh, while I was on the road, yeah. and that was like really hard because. Everybody was downstairs, like hanging out, and it was like all my heroes were down there. And I was like, "Am I really gonna sit in here with my protractor and my ruler scale and draw this, or should I be down there hanging out?" And I was like, "I'm gonna go hang out." And that was like yeah. the beginning of like, I don't like my I am a hundred percent involved in this. So like after that was going on, and then I realized I was getting like the worst grades I've ever gotten in my life. I was like. There's no point in me doing this. Yeah. Like, this is not where my You're not putting is. effort in. Yeah, and yeah. so, like, my parents were... My mom was super disappointed. Very. And, like, and she immediately was like, well, if you're not going to do this, you need to figure out where you're going to live. You mm -hmm. need to figure out how you're going to live. They kicked you out of the house? Uh, in but, a sense, yeah. But that but, was, like, you're, what, 18? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's, yeah. like, what all parents do, I think. It's like... Yeah. If you're not going to do this, you're going to do this because you're not going to ride bikes, especially at that time. Because at that time, there was, oh, there was no, nothing proven. Yeah, there was nothing proven. There was no one's making deals. I mean, in 97, I was probably making a few hundred bucks a month. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And like, I remember my parents did the same thing. Yep. And then I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm moving to the cheapest place in California, which is Big Bear. Yep. You know? Yeah. I made 600 bucks a month. Yeah. And so I did the same thing. I was like, well, okay, I need to figure out what I can, where I can live, how I can live. And so I was like, well. And this is before Harlem. Uh, this is right at the beginning of Harl. So ninety seven is when I signed, and so, then this is ninety seven, ninety eight. So you were making you were making some money. So at least you had a. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it wasn't a ton, but it was like all right. Like I think I was like I think I was like oh I got like a thousand bucks a month coming here. Yeah, like would you? Yeah. I'm gonna. So right at that same time, Haro asked me to ride for him. Mm -hmm. I rode for Hoffman Bikes, and um, they offered me kind of a lot of money, like mm -hmm. more than I was making Hoffman. Hoffman paid us pretty good then, in comparison, you know to, and. Uh, I was pretty much dead set on staying at Hoffman, but also Haro was like the company that I was like, dude, because Hoffman wrote for Haro. Yeah. Back and forth, you know, in the 90s, early 90s. So for me, I was like, oh, let me hear what you have to say. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, they um, they made an offer, and then I um, I had to quit Etnies to ride. Oh, because Adidas. Because Adidas. And so yeah. that was the deal breaker, right? And then they sponsored you. Mm -hmm. So they dodged a huge bullet. <laughs> <laughs> they made that 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 choice really honestly to god that choice <laughs> is what made haro stay in the game for the next 20 uh, years well, yeah. the, what have been called what would you call the frame not the back trail but the 
I, it would, there wouldn't have been a frame. <laughs> There wouldn't, have, there wouldn't have been a frame. I wouldn't have been, you know what I mean? Like, it just wouldn't have happened. Yeah, it's well, like, well, so, and, and backing up even a little, a little more, like, I I was under the impression, too, that, like, like right around the same time, TL, Todd Lyons, yeah. left for Huffy. And so I was, like, the replacement dirt jumper guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so, like, it was, like, this, like, weird time. Yeah. So, I mean. And in my head, I was like, oh, they found their contest guy. Yeah. They were trying to find their new contest guy. That's why I got asked, I think. You know yeah. what I mean? And then. And honestly, like back, I remember being like, "Oh fuck, Ryan got it, Ryan, Ryan took it." And um, and I wasn't super bummed because I like, wasn't a Brutal Leap Hoffman, anyways, you know. Mm. But I remember like years later, I'm thinking like, "God damn, Haro really dodged a bullet." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they would have like, been fine. It would have no, been like three more years, a couple years of me riding contests, and then I was out. You know what I mean? Like I was like, that ain't the same for me. So they, you, yeah, they but, yeah. I mean, you you've been on Haro for 26 years. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and I, I'm only going to say this because I, I don't know any facts, but I'm going to guess sometime around, based on my own appearances, early 2000, 2002, 2020, 2003, your paychecks have only gone down there. <laughs> yeah. And that's not because of you. That's just because of that's the industry, reality. right? Yeah. And I, I, I is, that's really honorable. It's, a, it went a different no, right it's really thought. honorable, and it says a lot about you. Um, that you've stayed with them and what, why have you stayed with them? And you know what I mean? Because most people you hear about like, well, I deserve this. And especially for you who your trajectory has only gone like this mm. and it hasn't ever stopped. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I appreciate that. I don't know if it's still going up, but it, I mean, the game has changed so many times. It's hard to really yeah. tell. Like, I mean, back in the day, it was like you were, your worth was your contest places yeah. and how much TV time. So like nowadays it's like, you know, everybody has a TV in front of them and you have a way to make a TV show and yeah. you can put it up there. So it's, it's definitely changed. Um, but I, I, I love Haro. Like I just, I, the people there, it's always felt like family. They've always treated me nice um, regardless of contracts and money. And like you said, yeah, like, I mean, things do slow down and they have slowed down for a number of years, but you know, like I don't really want to start over. Like yeah. I love the idea of being with a company my pretty much my entire career. Which you don't get anymore. You got that in the eighties. Dude's yeah. like, oh, Fiola. You know, once you got on GT, it was just GT for them. Like yeah. you have, yeah. which you're one of the few people yeah. you know that have it. And that's re- to me like that's special. I mean, that's got to be the longest standing sponsorship. I would assume, like current, you know with, how the, you know, like, like with when the, with the contract, with the bike yeah. contest, yeah. with the bike con, bike yeah. con, yeah, yeah like yeah. With, like with an actual contract. I th- I think people like you know like Volker, you know, like yeah. Volker's still on GT and he gets hooked up and stuff. Yeah, but, but like, that that went away for a couple of years where yeah. there's no yeah. contact and stuff like that. So. But yeah, with with like an actual contract, yeah. I, I would think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish there was more. I really yeah, do. I should. wish there was more people yeah. that were like, yo, I made an entire like career out of this. Yeah, yeah. It's hard though, like because sometimes, especially then, like. You might ride for a bike and they just went away, right? Yeah. Or, or then, then there's a lot of guys who I see like they just um, and or they just think they deserve more, and sometimes deserve and possible are t- just not in the same deck of cards. Yeah, yeah, and you know? and for me, like you know, like you said, like salaries and stuff. Yeah, they were going down, but that was because everything was going down. Everything was going down. It, it wasn't, wasn't like it wasn't... all of a sudden, like across the board, bike shops or bike yeah. companies were like, "Yo, everybody, let's get together. Let's pay everybody less right now." No, that's Starting not, now. That's like, now. Yeah, that's now. Yeah, but like, I mean, yeah, that was no. reality. It's like, okay, like sales are going down, and you heard that for so many years. But it was like, and the first two, you're like, okay, yeah, okay, but then you're like, oh, well, no, it actually is. And yeah. so, you know, for me, I'm like, yeah, like, well, I mean, your intelligence uh, in general, I think, played into you having such a a long career that's been successful because of that sort of look you know you're you i think that maybe you didn't know it but you were level-headed uh you know, i, I, I even, tried to be even through all your i tried to be win, winnings you know i tried to be i, I just why i like you i thank you um <laughs> because i didn't yeah did you know that a lot of people didn't like me yeah i i'm a completely aware of that but i didn't actually. like you there wasn't i did not like you <laughs> i did not like you for any reason other than like childish teenage shit you know what I mean? Like you. Just, I think we me, talked about this. Like you and Akabak would have conversations oh, I don't about me. That. I, don't I think remember you that, told but, me one time. So why, I, why weren't you likable? But I. Because I, mean, I. Go ahead. Because, you, because, because he showed up. <laughs> he showed up to a freestyle contest with no pegs and a Rastafarian jersey on, and he was just a jumper. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was it. You and you were clearly North and got NorCal. Oh, you this know? is the this is the Park Street phase. So you needed to be. Well, you just it, back in the nineties. You just was. You just didn't. To me. And this is like, this is my bad on my part, you know, like you just didn't fit in to what I think the rep, like on the deck, you look at you, you're like, you look like a dirt jumper on the, on the thing. Well, Not only a dirt yeah. jumper, but you look yeah. like a racer. Yeah. 
You know, or like a mountain biker. That's what you look like. You look like a that mountain was, biker. That was the, the mountain bike jersey. Is, here's the thing: is, uh-huh. in the '90s, no one can, no one can argue that mountain biking isn't fun. But in the '90s, uh, mountain bikers were just fucking dorks. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, like that, it, it, everybody knows. Uh, now it's totally different. You know, uh, but that's what you look like. I mean, at the X Games, that X Games in San Diego, I remember you came. I we, there was a little. Remember they had the two two six foot quarter pipes, big wall ride, mm-hmm. little one in the middle. Yeah. And you were like, how, how do you do a wall ride? And I was like, what What? What did you say? I think this is made up. No, this isn't made up. No, this is a real story. You're like, how do, how do you, oh, you just do more? How do you do that? Because we were doing the big wall ride. Coast you know? to coast, yeah. And then you were like, you're like, oh, I was probably going in the middle. Well, you weren't even doing that really. And then you're like, how do you, I'm like, well, you just do it. You know, whatever no, I said. Dude, hold this on, is hold on. not real. This is a real story. Hold no, on. No, okay. It, you, you end up on top. So hold on. So you, you do a wall ride. So I do, I do a wall ride. You're like, ah, oh, whatever. And so he's like, I was kind of gave you like a two cents, like, dude, just lean into whatever I said. And so you did one. And then you did one in full bar spin out. And I'm like, fuck this kid. That's what I'm saying. I like I, I remember doing a full maybe, bar spin out. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're just troll maybe you're just trolling. Maybe you're just trolling me. Yeah. Maybe anyway, like rooftop. How do you do this? That, how do you do it? Shortly yeah. after that. Show me. I, show me I've Almighty <laughs> Rooftop. <laughs> wow. Can you sign my shirt afterwards? Yeah. Shortly oh. after that, I revered you as one of the top five to eight best people I've ever ridden a bike. Ooh. Even to this day. Seriously. And then your career for Joseph. Wow. But it, it didn't. It took a few years um, for you to not be a dorky ass mountain biker. Well, I, I was definitely hated by more than just you. So you know, you weren't. Alone. What was it? What was the main reasoning you know, outside of outside uh, of very similar reason? So Brian, Brian Foster told me another similar story that he was just like he couldn't stand me. You know, <laughs> like he was like, who is this dude? Like sh- showing up in the jersey. You know, it yeah. was it was it was all like, I mean, I came into BMX and things were changing yeah. you know like like there were jerseys like there were like bigger sponsors coming in so i came into that and that was my norm yeah. you know so like a lot of people that weren't used to that were like everyone else was from the pre x yeah. games every pro was from the pre x game so they're like that was it we grew up with you know you're just wearing whatever yeah. jeans and and, and honestly mm-hmm. like i mean to my defense like ignorance was bliss i didn't know if i should or shouldn't be i, I had my heroes and stuff and i knew what they were doing but i was also like you know, when you get approached by like Alan Foster from Airwalk and he's like, yo, like, can you do this? And can you wear that? And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. Like, wait, so, this is great. so Alan Foster was giving you shit and then Brian Foster was talking shit? Eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a time lapse there. But, um, <laughs> no, that's fine. But no, it was, it was like just a wild time. And so, like, and, and also, like, I came on to like the park or street scene they called it mm-hmm. and i was a jumper and yeah. so i was going to the box jump and doing stuff that yeah. like you know i learned at home and like not a lot of people were doing like the 360 bar bar back i called it the back trailer and nobody had done that yet yeah. and i did it in seal beach for the first time ever and i remember being like stoked you yeah. know like oh i can't believe i did that but then also talking to mira and mccoy and apparently on the side they had a bet who was going to be the first to do it and then i came in and just pulled the rug oh, out yeah so yeah. there was a lot of stuff like that where I don't think I came into Ruffle Feathers, but I was just like, you know, like a super hyper hungry kid that just wanted to ride and, and do well. Like, you were good. And you're probably and people didn't know how to place you. Yeah. And it was a threat, probably, yeah. in a, a sense. I, it's a threat, but it wasn't like a threat. It wasn't from the person you wanted to, to be a threat from. No, I'm saying he was a threat that's to like the po- well, stealing the podium well, spot or like, something. It, it was like the threat. I, I think because I don't think back then there was real th- we didn't, I don't think the mindset was threats, but I think you were a threat because it wasn't that you were going to beat them. It was that this was going to beat them. What do you mean this? This jersey. And oh, this, the this, kid. You know, oh, you know what I mean? oh this, yeah. This, this version <laughs> yeah. of the kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? This no, you know what I mean? Maybe. No I'll take your word for it. I was, I was just out there yeah. doing bar spins and yeah. bar spins and bar spins and just not knowing how to jump a could spine you, could yet. You, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Could you air quarters and stuff like that? I could that? air quarters barely. Like I, I went actually, I went through a tape not recent, not too long ago and like, my run in Seal Beach, that was like my first pro contest, was just insane. What was your first pro contest? Seal Beach. Oh, first pro. I, I went amateur. I rode amateur what? and then won and then was like, I think I'm going to turn pro. And huh? they were like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so what was it? What was your run? Didn't even have goddamn oh, pegs dude. on his bike. It was like Superman, seat grab, no foot can. Everything revolved around the box. Yeah. Everything. So any chance I had to go back and hit the box, I hit the box. I mean, that's a that's a theme, you know. Like, I mean, Spinner got shit for that back in the day, and then there's even at the feast events, it's the, like. But this is also like, I mean, yeah, hundred percent. Like the box jump has always been a back big then. Obstacle. People yeah. were bike riders. Yeah. Well, I mean, they rode everything. If, if you looked at <laughs> you like, I mean, they weren't like street riders, and they weren't. Yeah. Fun, yeah. They were like, it, like yeah. so, like countering 
combine that with like your run where you always rode the course and used different obstacles. Like I was never going to hit the grind rail. Right. But yeah. you did that. You hit the box. Mira's run was super flowy. He could ride a quarter. He was flip like flaring, flip faking, tail whipping. And I was just like, there was a pyramid like box jump, four way box jump thing in the middle. I like did a rocket bar spin over that and yeah. then would go back up to the top and turn around and runs were also 90 seconds long, long. <laughs> so like you so, had many opportunities really? to go back up and hit the yeah. box and it wasn't frowned upon if you like took a breather you yeah. know so yeah you had, my, to, you had to take a breather my yeah. run was was like make like there was a double coping spine there six foot tall and i was like i'm not bar spinning that <laughs> i don't know i'm just gonna get over it so then i can do like a bar spin tail tap on the other side and also a lot of your stuff was bar spins and that was oh, like it was all bars it was all bar spins so i think that was also people like all oh, that dude does bar spins and i think it was yeah. a bit of like not hating on the bar spin, like not hating on you, but just hating because all the shit you did was really hard. But you're, but we were trying to find something to hate on. Yeah, it was really you know? easy with my riding because it was it was heavy with the bar spins and heavy with the jumping. Um, I remember I went to a contest, a, a BS contest in Orlando, Florida, at the World of Disney. This is Indoor. a big one for me and you both. Yeah, but like I, I rode. I felt like I rode pretty good, and then I ended up in 26th place, and I was like, dude, like it crushed me. That, and I remember I, I, I think I talked to Losi afterwards because Losi was one of the judges. He's like, dude, you just do, you're just kind of doing a lot of jumping, bar spin, double bar spin well, stuff. And dude, it like it broke me into tears. Uh-huh. Yeah, I remember I was gonna say you were in the hallway crying. I was, I yeah. was like super sad because I was like, I don't know what to do. Like that's that's what I do. And I and I was like, I wanted to continue down this path so bad, but yeah. like that was like such a heavy hit to me because I was like, what I don't know. And from that point on, I was like, I have to learn different stuff i gotta figure this out because if they're gonna tell me that all i'm doing is jumping and just a jumper then i have to like figure this out and i i put in work dude like i got way more technical it was right around that time i moved to greenville so like riding with dave dave was like all along like he was so well-rounded so So, like you know riding sub boxes and like sub rails and all this stuff that i didn't know how to do like i learned that and then also on the flip side i remember him telling me like this is sick dude like we we're like we're jumping together and we're learning stuff and so we fed off each other, but that like hundred percent, I was like committed to being like a well-rounded rider yeah. that would like it hit. It didn't the take course. long. Cause yeah, I remember really. there was a time when I was like, Oh, there's Ryan. And then, like I said, a couple years later, I was like, Oh shit, dude. Ryan's I, dude, no joke. Like, I was, he was just, you're so good at everything. I was always very competitive, very competitive. And so when someone told me that my riding was not good and I just did a certain thing, like, dude, I, I would take that to heart. And so yeah. I would go home and put the work in. Yeah. Like that's all it took for me. It was just suddenly like, yo, like the same thing I did the last contest where I got like fifth or eighth or whatever, like all of a sudden isn't good enough. All right. So I would go home and just, and I put the work in and nice. that's like, honestly, like that's all I ever wanted was just to like be better. Is it weird that like something like that one, one contest will change your entire trajectory? Uh, yes and no. But that's, that's like, honestly, like that's kind of the kind of person I was is like, Tell me I can't. Yeah. Like, tell me. Like, tell me and I'll show you. It's funny how different we are because for me, that contest, I qualified first at that contest. And it was, and I didn't jump the box once. Yeah. And then I got third place in the contest. And then on TV, they showed like one clip of me. Mm-hmm. And then they showed Dave Mira's full run at 10th place. Yeah. And I was like, I don't need to ever go to contest again. That was, <laughs> that, was why, that was why I quit writing contest. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to be here. They're not going to show me. Yeah. We don't need to be here. And that changed my whole trajectory. You know, so it's that's interesting. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a different it's like take. It's a completely yeah. different take. Like I, but it's it's weird to me that we because we both clearly were so in love with bike riding, to yeah. to like we're like I have to learn and do what we're doing. But it was such two different paths. That, and I think and I think you had you had a lot more. I mean, you were you had established yourself earlier than I yeah. did, and hey. so you had those like opportunities of like going over to like England and yeah, like yeah. riding with all those dudes and like having that in. And I I was still fighting my way into whatever it was but at the same time like i love and i still do love competing uh, there's something about like dropping in and seeing if you can do it yeah you know like it's a test and it yeah. will always be a test and to me it was always the test of like it doesn't matter like yeah last time you were able to do it like can you do it again like that doesn't overlap it doesn't the answer like, is yes ryan over. we all fucking know yes well, you can do it again i've had some great success but like that was always like for me was like the biggest challenge of like okay like can i show up and do it again or can I show up and correct what I did wrong? Like I want to talk about like that moment because I feel like I've seen it so many times where like it's Ryan Nyquist about to drop in. He's got to get this score. <laughs> and you're like up on there and obviously you've been riding so you're like a little sweaty and you're like, 
And you take this like deep breath and it's like, I, I mean, it's, it's like, it, it's like a quintessential thing. I can't think of a single like thing, but it's is a, there, it's is a there... produced movie moment as well. Oh, yeah. Like. Right. <laughs> I, I've it's been in CGI. enough movies that I, no, no, no. I mean like it looks like when, so, seriously, when I watch you guys, you do that. You can see it. The comedy, it looks like someone wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and bec- it's because you're that guy. Yeah. You know, you are that, that winning competitor. You know what I mean? Who's just, you know, you're, you're, you're Rocky Balboa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your face, you know what I mean though? Like when it all when it comes down to it, like you Yeah, there, you there, make it happen. There was like uh, like one I can't even tell the year, oh three, oh four, something like that. I it, it came down to the last run, you know, kind of thing, and you're like the last guy to go. You qualified first and you needed this run to like get first place, right? Mm-hmm. And then I think I slipped a hand on a seven twenty or something like that. And I remember being devastated. Like devastated because I was like, it was right there. Like there was nothing that should have stopped me from doing that, but it did. Mm-hmm. And I remember I, I went through the whole next year just with that X Games on my brain. Like X Games, this if this ever happens again, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. Dude, I had a song picked out and I when at that time you could like list what songs. Yeah. And I remember three runs. So the third song, it was uh Bittersweet Symphony, which was so weird, but like that's the one that I heard and I was like, that's my that's my song for that moment. And I played it thinking, I hope it doesn't come down to that. But if it does, the song is going to come on. And I visualize this moment yeah. for an entire year, dude. Yeah. For an entire year of just living that that moment over and over of my hand falling off and laying on the ground going, I just lost it. And I put myself in that same exact situation. Last guy to go, had to pull the run. That song popped on. And I just remember being like, this is it. And pulled the run, got the win. But I was like that to me was one credits of credits roll credits roll. Dude, it was yeah. it was insane. Like, and I was like, I I didn't like obviously I didn't want to be in that pressure situation. But having that all play out the way it did, like, still gives me goosebumps. Do you think no. you really didn't want it, or do you think you willed it to happen? No, I did not. I did not want it to happen. <laughs> you sure? Everybody in their whole entire like career wants to be able to take a victory run. You want to smash it in the first two opportunities and not have to worry about it, right? Like, so for me, no, I did not want to have that pressure situation, but I was there. And the fact that I was like, I thought about this moment for an entire year. Hmm. Like, let's go. That's what I'm saying. I think you manifested that moment. I don't know. If you think about something for a year. I don't know. Year, and let me tell you something. There, from a, from a, I think from my perspective, what's the, what's there's the, nothing cool about a victory run. What you, that, what you're doing is way more when cool. you're the, when you're the guy doing it. It's yeah. pretty dang cool. The, from, yeah. the, from the from <laughs> the from the producer aspect, that oh, is a, that is a good. No, that is no, great. From no, the, the from victory, the guy in the victory run. Or you don't have to try. You no, I'm run. saying the winning thing, run. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The way it played yeah. out was the like that's what I'm was saying. Yeah. Great TV. Yeah. But I do. Do you? I mean, you probably never had this uh, a losing streak. Um, <laughs> but do you ever find? Uh, did you ever find that when you're riding contests that as long as you were always? Because I know for me, if, if I never occurred to me that I wasn't when I was doing contests and wanted to do it, it never occurred to me that I wasn't going to qualify. Mm-hmm. And I know other people are like, oh, I hope I qualify. I'm like, oh well, yeah. 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 And do you, does it ever? Did do, do you ever? Do you ever find yourself finding that it never occurs to you that you're not, that you weren't going to qualify and get top three because it became it was just what you did. Um, you know, yeah, where... that was that was part of the process. I think the nerve wracking part was like knowing how much to lay up. Mm-hmm. Like I knew what I needed to do in the finals. Um, I actually had a conversation with uh, Sandoval because he's you know a heavy competitor, but like yeah. he wants to just go in there and send it. Like mm-hmm. that's his which, thing. Which. Which, as much as grief I give him sometimes, I he does, and it's I'm into that. Oh, when, when it I'm comes, into it. When it comes, if he's in a situation where finals are going down, and he's like mentally in there, and he knows what he's got to do, like you know, he's he's an insanely strong competitor, but yeah. like he hates the qualifying process, and that's the whole thing. Is like we've talked about for a number of years. Is like you know, like you want to get to the finals because that's your eventual goal, but you have to know how much to do every single step because you have things that you want to do in the finals that are way above what you need to do to qualify or get to the next yeah. round. And you can't risk it. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, I could do that. But then you also want that wow factor of like, well, I haven't done that yet. And I don't want the judges to see it yet because if they see that, then they think I should be stepping it up. And if I don't, then yeah. it's like, oh. And they're saying, oh, well, it's doing the same thing he did in the qualifying. Dude, yeah. Competition is a crazy thing. And it's like, a, it's a big mind game. Do you, but, was it? Oh. Do you have, do you look at riders who, because I, mean, I know you know some, I know some, some guys who are like some of the most winning riders who you feel like never stepped it up because they're so good that they just never knowing what they can do and they never put it on the line. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I feel like you always hear rumors about Bestwick. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Bestwick yeah. was like the dude that you he can do hear everything. that he did X, Y, and Z. And you're like, no way. And so you assumed he would break. He never saw contest, but he was so good 
and he had so much dominance. It was like, what? Like, why would you? Like, you know, like he played it but, like. Yeah. But do you have what I'm asking? I guess is, do you have that mindset? Why would you? Or are you like, do, I want to give this back to the sport? Like, I oh, want. I don't know. It, it, for me, it was never like a give it back. Or like, or just, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, I learned this. I I'm was gonna like, give it. I'm I have this. this thing in my pocket. There it is. I just, I want to put mm-hmm. it out there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. so excited. Yeah. Like, so you yeah. have it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or like, he doesn't. For whatever reason. But man, like, I mean, it worked about, for him. Talk about like intelligent level, like be like, yo, let me see what everybody else is doing. OK, well, do I need to risk it? And he did risk it multiple times. Like, I remember yeah, trying nines good. in the wind and like, like, yeah. just like, I mean, the dude's falling on stuff yeah. that's insanely hard. Um, but you hear these rumors and you're like, dang, I want to see that. Yeah. You know? And I wonder if the rumors are real. You never know. I you know, you never are. know. Or if they're just rumors. I, I feel like I feel like there's a good percentage of of. And, and in my head, in my head, I hope they're rumors because it makes me, I hate to say this, less of a fan if, if he had all this stuff that we I never know, saw. Because I heard decade 540s. I heard tons of oh, stuff. Oh, I'm sure. Double I players before sure. Kevin, everything. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm um, sure all that stuff exists. I, I just think that there's, you know, if you showed up to a contest and you had the idea that you were like, Almost not guaranteed because nothing's guaranteed. But like, dude, if I just stay on my bike, I'm gonna win. You know, because you know when you're close, dude. Like, I, like I that's would not his. Be, that's not his fault. I would either, love you to know, be in that like, position of being like, well, yo, no, if I, I mean, go on the ramp and I do like X, Y, and Z, which I know I can do, and it's still hard, but like I know I can do it, and I'm gonna win. I would. I would. But especially love to once be in you qualify, position. though. But especially once you qualify. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once you qualify, I, I feel like it's like, all right, well, let me send one. Yeah. You know wasn't, I mean? wasn't there maybe. something maybe I don't know I mean I guess on vert it's a, the, the, the consequences are you're out <laughs> yeah I mean, we're on, we're on yeah. park you can like I could survive a, yeah you might something. be able to slide out of something on the yeah, bottom yeah. but you, so I, I see that but <laughs> I guess I just like if you just, I, yeah. I've always kind of admired the ready fire aim guys I, ready I fire know, yeah. yeah well I mean yeah I mean and, and I think Bestwick probably had those moments and but I wonder I mean, if he but I guess wonder if he had those moments and I wonder if the idea of him and how good he was, we didn't feel like he had those moments because he was so good. Well, I think as fans of BMX, you want to see the show. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, but I wonder yeah. if, like, I wonder if we have put him such on a pedestal on how good he is. He was so smooth and good that maybe he had some of those moments in there for him. Oh, but, possibly. Oh, but, but yeah, we, we didn't, didn't see that yeah. because we're like, well, yeah, well, we just did it in the middle well, of the and, and, yeah. and it's going. it's it's hard, you know. Like, and I used to say, like, the best thing best thing could have done was lose every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. you yeah, know, for because sure. like he was so dominant. But I kind of killed the show. Almost. I mean, yeah. again, putting myself in his shoes, like, dude, I would have dominated the hell out of that too. Yeah, like, yeah. no, no yeah. question. Like, not his no fault. way I would yeah. ever laid up for that. And it's like, so yeah, like the dude killed Vert. Like, still kills Vert. It's crazy. Oh, I'm, yeah. What there was something I heard that you lost an event and punched the ground. Oh yeah, I did. What what event was that? Gravity Games. Gravity Games. Yeah. Which which one? Second one or the first one? Uh, Providence. So They're it was uh, <laughs> second one then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what? Would you, I, would you lock, would you, what place did you get? I don't even know. But you, Not first. Not first. Oh, I think it was, it was, because I, I remember. That's all we really know. That's all I knew, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I messed up and I crashed and it was really, it wasn't something that I, should have crashed on and mm-hmm. you know like at that time too i was riding dirt uh park which was street and also vert mm-hmm. so i was oh, yeah. stretched oh, pretty thin triple threat stretched pretty thin made, and i made finals in all of them and it was just like it what? was a, it was a lot it was just a long week of riding bikes and juggling schedules along with media because you're doing all that and sponsor obligate like mm-hmm. they, they were busy weeks and so i remember i crashed in dirt and i was just like so mad at myself so mad at myself that, yeah, I was just standing at the ground and I just punched it. While you were still on the ground? I right after I crashed. Yeah. Oh, that's and I was just like cameras. this. And I was just like, boom. And I just remember going, just broke my hand. Did you break it? Oh, I, I was positive I broke Boxer it. Boxer break? So I got up and I was like, mm, okay. Mm. And at the time, Gabrielle Reese was doing like a lot of like the interview comment. And this was so freaking cool because it would have been so easy for her to like dismiss it or walk away. And I remember she pulled me to the side, like not interviewing whatever. She goes, hey, like – that was dumb, but you know what I saw through that was passion, and you care, and you wanted it that bad. You need to figure out a way to channel that into something positive, because wow. you just basically set yourself back. And I did. I was like, I got to go to the hospital now. I got to get X-rayed. I ended up not breaking it, but it, it was like still really messed yeah. up. Mm-hmm. What but a I cool was like, moment! Oh, dude, it was insane. Because I mean, she, you know, she, I don't. For those that don't know who she is, like insane volleyball player, world class, yeah. but like also like like ascended beyond just volleyball like she was known throughout the world right yeah, she yeah. was 
one of the biggest women uh Giant Athletes. woman, huh? Yeah, she, I mean, yeah, she towered up <laughs> me, yeah, but she was like, an avatar. She was, she was like, yeah, she was, she was awesome. But like, I, I think I can picture her. In my yeah, head. She, yeah, she's yeah. Like, she learned really. Hamilton's wife, yeah. okay. as well. Right. And, and but, but like, it was just like you didn't need to do that. Like, yeah. you didn't have to pull me aside and be like, hey, like, you know, that moment you just had right there was bad, and and you know it was bad because in hindsight, yeah, you um, like broke my hand. Yeah. But like, she was like, just you're passionate. I can see that you love what you do. You need to figure out how to channel that into positivity. And I was like, "Dang!" Did you yeah. actively do that? Like, what was the what was the repercussion? Yeah, he won for the last twenty years. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and I never, well, I never punched the ground again. The, yeah. the cool thing about that is yeah. that that could have only come from someone else at, uh, on the equal level of you as as an athlete and a competitor. I respected that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know? it could have yeah. it only came from that, and it would have only probably meant if it would have just been like some cameraman who said that, or like some TV host that, like Paul Higgins yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Yep. You would have been like, Shut the fuck. so uh, so you know? a positive no. uh, spin off of that, and so I, I would always had. I held myself to a very high standard, probably higher than was realistic. But sometimes I met it and I was very happy, but other times I didn't. And I got very upset with myself. And I remember one time there was a triple crown or maybe a due, a due tour in Oregon, in Portland. And I remember I messed up the run somewhere and I was still, I still was riding, but I just didn't get the trick I wanted. And I remember going all the way to the end and I was like so mad at myself that I was like, I'm just going to punish myself and I'm going to do this trick. And if I crash, I deserve it. And it was a nothing to straight double bar. <laughs> and I was like, I don't care. Like, I can't believe I just messed up back there. So whatever. I kind of like this, Ryan. And Lundquist. I remember it was like, boom, nothing. Grabbed on, just spun it. I was like, Psh, whatever. <laughs> I'm into this. I'm and so then I was like, this. oh. And I grabbed on and I landed. I was still mad. And I remember Darden was right there. And Darden was like, what the? F-? You know, they're just yeah. like, what? And all I could think about, I it was like, I didn't even realize what I did. I was trying to punish myself. Because I had messed up. And I just remember being like so angry that I didn't realize I had done this trick that I never wanted to do. Never thought of doing. But for some reason, it popped in my head as I'm coming around the berm for the last set and then did it. But the whole time, I'm just like, I can't believe myself, dude. Are, are you kidding me right now? Okay, let me. Okay, let's hit the ground. You deserve it. Like just it. weird stuff. Wow. But like, I but yeah, it's pretty but, normal. I, yeah. I, I, think it's, I think that's kind of normal. <laughs> I mean, I think it's normal for people of your caliber who've worked so hard at something and are and you know because there's different bike riders around the eras where it's like they're just good and it doesn't really matter to them but then you're like dudes who are like work really hard to be good and then dudes who are like just want to win but not for anything more than the love of what they do like it's not a because I, I, I feel like with you I, you said you're very competitive but it's not just i want to win you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a lot of it was for me. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, but I, I mean, just, like anger and BDs, but, basically, but like, right? You know, if you yeah, just, <laughs> like, like blacked out yeah, and like it, seeing red, but just yeah. flinging the bars, masochistic yeah, I don't know ABD that, that and, was, and BDs. That was, yeah, that, and that that was like that was like a weird like one off. And and I, I from that I was like, yeah, that was dumb because I could have ended up on the ground and that would have been even yeah. worse, right? Like I wouldn't have, because that those t- like I was still riding park and dirt, so like it would have messed up the weekend. But it was just like you know like. I cared. Wait, so I mean, were much. you were you out of control? Like, I, I don't know. Like, it was it like? I I, I think dude, it, I, I was, think you're looking at just, this all wrong, man. I maybe think, I am. I like, think I yeah. I just think that like I think those are the things that make you who you are. Oh, you know 100%, I mean? like, 100%. And the only reason no. you could have done that is because you can do it. Because it was possible. Well, because you were prepared, so you did everything. If you want to look at it like that way, yeah, I got out of my own way. I didn't think no. about it. Yeah. I just sent it because I was like, I don't care. Like yeah. there was no, like, I hope I don't crash. It was like, no, I hope I do crash. <laughs> so I got out of the way of that. But like, I, you know, it's just, I don't know. I felt like there was a really good quote by Sean White that I heard him say one time in like a documentary. And it, it totally rang true when like I had, I had like a series of like years where I just felt like I couldn't lose. And, and he said something that was like, oh my gosh, I felt that before. And he goes, I felt like the second I even just showed up, I showed up with an advantage and I was like, dude, like, and that and I, he's hundred percent right. Oh, hundred percent. Like yeah. his confidence when he was on top was like next level. Like, mm-hmm. and so that was what I was sort of feeling at that same time too. It was just like the second I showed up, I knew I just felt like I had an advantage because I knew what I was capable of. I knew I was driven and focused enough to get it if I wanted it. And your presence probably affected other people's confidence. I mean, like, there's so much my yeah. mental game to this, but, like, yeah, showing up to practice and just doing all the stuff that I wanted to do and being confident and being dialed. Like, you, when you see someone like that on the course, 
like it affects you, dude, yeah, it affects because you. you're like, I have to beat that guy. Yeah. yeah, that's my job right now is to beat that guy, and he is looking unbeatable. See, that's why we didn't like you because that guy was wearing a Rastafarian shirt. <laughs> that's, and yeah. so we didn't blue goatee. Yeah. You you just, you just, with a blue goatee, <laughs> you just summed up why we didn't like you because. Oh, well, there you go. I just that's it. it. I mean, that's he, a, you mind fucked us from the early <laughs> mid nineties. That, that's uh, it's that's hard. Course. It's hard for me to understand that, but I get it. You know, like for, it's hard for me to relate for that because I've never been that, and I've never had that that amount of confidence confidence in the in the fact that whatever it's, i was doing yeah this like, is, it just i, I remember hearing that, him say i had that, i had that confidence i had that I confidence two weeks ago on a rail and it fucking put me to sleep that's, basically that's so said, yeah. uh, that's what i meant when i said did you ever go to comments just assuming you were going to the confidence was so high that it wasn't you just know that you're high confidence you're but it was well. never assumed because because i i had learned my lessons enough times that I knew that if I assumed that anything was going to happen or if I knew, like told myself I was going to win, then I let up. Did you find mm-hmm. yourself doing worse when you had to really think about what you had to do? Like I know for no. me, if I just went and did what I was, what I, this is what I want to do. And if I paid attention to what everyone else would do, because I would always, I always wanted to go first. Mm. I always wanted to go first. So I didn't have to like, so there, so I didn't get mind, no, you know, man, didn't my, mind games by them. Mine watching was them. like, whatever the situation whatever mm. like stress or whatever like i true competitor i just i knew what i needed <laughs> to do and i would i would just wrap my head around it and i would focus and visualize and then drop in and get it done was there any contests that uh, either are your favorite contests because of something like that or any contests where you what you just said where you were like oh i know what i have to do now and it was something that was slightly out of your reach yeah there was so um there was one contest in uh, Whistler. It was like the best contest we ever had. Um, I remember. Uh, yeah, Red Bull contest. Yeah, it was awesome. The elevation. Elevation. And uh, and I remember I spent like an entire, not a week, but like maybe three or four days with Corey Bowen doing media stuff up there. And I remember like he and I were the dudes, like, you know, knowing that we were going to go to battle, but like, you know, like still friends, but just knew when it came time, like mm-hmm. we were going to be swinging. And mm-hmm. I remember I was like, I got to get this done. I remember. And so those jumps were terrifying. They were amazing, but yes, terrifying. Um, and I remember in practice, like practicing and practicing and practicing and just things were getting progressively worse. And I remember like at one point I had to stop mid set and I just pulled it over and I sat there for probably 10 minutes, just looking away from everything, from everybody. You know, the medic came over and was like, okay, I was like, I'm good. And I just was like, I need to get myself centered. I mm-hmm. need to figure out what it is that's messing me up and just take a break and just take some deep breaths and come back to it. And knowing that like, okay, I got to go off here, right? And so I remember getting centered, calming down, getting back up the jumps, riding them, like almost just starting over. And then things were starting to put themselves together. And then the contest was happening. Corey was crushing it. Like, I just remember I had... And that I, was Corey Bowen's time. Oh yeah, yeah like you, just you, if you weren't a Corey Bowen fan, you weren't watching the contest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I remember like I had, I had done, which was super weird for me, but like like a three whip before, but I had to spin opposite three, and it was completely <sighs> unusual, and I hadn't done it, and I was like kind of like, uh, like I know if I do this, it's gonna be super surprised. Nobody see me really do it, and it'd be awesome because it would be mid set, and I'd have to keep going. But I was like, yeah, I think this is what I have to do, and I remember doing it, and it doesn't sound like much because it's just a three whip, but for me, it was just like completely outside my comfort zone yeah i had done it it wasn't proven i wasn't comfortable but i was like all right this is what it's gonna take and just did it and it worked and i was like dude this is crazy and like that was like i don't know like there was a couple moments like that of like things that you're like i'm not comfortable right now but mm-hmm. if this is what i want i have to do this and you kind of talk yourself up and you like, like that you psych yourself up and you go for it and yeah like a couple moments like that i tried not to get in those situations i i was never really much of like a huck it guy mm-hmm. and just see what happens but you know, like I wanted it. I wanted to win. Yeah. Did I you win? Seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's remember that yell. I story. remember that yell at the bottom of the berm. Yeah, yeah. It's just like I don't know. That's all I've ever wanted to do is ride my best and win. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, I just I love so you. It. Got it. You got it. You got it. You got. You got what you wanted. I did. You got what you wanted. Did there's been a time where you've you ever in any of those years because you had a very. I mean, it's only like a couple riders that got what you got, meaning when the sport really blew up you started doing stuff with the family and you and mira family blew up, being uh, family being the agency, agency yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you and mira really got opportunities that no one else got mm-hmm. which i'm sure caused animosity um, some riders and it also was like i would assume a bit of 
your life kind of felt unreal a little bit compared to everyone else's because everyone else was still riding BMX. And for us, it looked like you guys were becoming rock stars. Yeah. You know, but you always kept a level head. Was there ever a time where you're like, for me that, that period of time, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Um, like I wasn't fully aware of what was happening around me. Understandable. Uh, I, I just, all I cared about was riding. I yeah. just wanted to ride and win contests. Like it's, it's so very simple at the core of it. it it's almost, like, it's almost unbelievable because it's how, how do you be in that relation well, in that, in that situation and your yeah. ego doesn't inflate I mean, I, to a also, point for me. And that's, that's, that's a, that's a testament to kind of guy. Rogers, agreed. But, agreed. Yeah. But I also think maybe for you, since you were so focused on like, it was just what was happening to you. Right. And yeah. You, instead of I like, was, you weren't trying to get those things. They were just happening. And there's very much a big difference between that. You're things you want and you try to get and things that just happen. Yeah. I, th I think about that a lot and I, I don't really have regrets of, how I did things, but it's like, man, like if I had play, like paid a little bit better attention to what was happening around me, the, uh, the opportunities, the people that we were dealing with, like, could I have done something more? Like, but then I think back and I was like, I really didn't want anything else on my plate. I really, all I want to do is ride. Yeah. You know, like I look at, I have like a old passport and you look through and you see all these amazing stamps. And I was like, dude, I don't, none of this matters. Like I didn't see anything except for the airport, the hotel, mm -hmm. the venue and some restaurants. Yeah. And then I went back home. Yeah. And I could have easily spent three or four days exploring, meeting new people, seeing the entire world on somebody else's dime, and I did not care. Yeah. I didn't care about any of that. And I I do regret that because I could have stayed off the bike for three or four days to, like, see the world. Yeah. Like, something that, but like, I, I mean, mean, that's a pretty big education, you know, and I, I do regret that. I do agree because, obviously, I have the yeah. same sort of feelings a lot of times. But he's, sw he's, he's swam in actual human shit before. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool story. <laughs> cool story, um, it's, yeah, it's he's called, got all the experience it, it's called your 40s um, <laughs> um, is but, that what i feel like but i but do you think if you would have done that maybe all this would have changed oh i could have do you know what i mean because maybe you would yeah. have it would have found something that just tilted your interest here a little bit and yeah. maybe or, or or steered your focus a little bit towards some other well, thing and, yeah 100 percent. because like my my wife now like she we dated when i was like you know winning a lot of contests and stuff and and i was really high strung mm -hmm. like yeah. when it when it came time like you know like i i didn't want to go out to like the party and stuff and she just didn't understand why she's like wait so there's a party that you're invited to you have vip passes social distortions playing you probably get to meet them and you don't want to go i'm like yeah not really mm -hmm. yeah because because i practice tomorrow yeah <laughs> i'm like yeah i'm here i'm here for this like this is what i want i like I'll listen to Social Distortion on the way home on my Walkman. You know, like, yeah. you still, you <laughs> that's good enough for me. Yeah, I understand. Beat the crowd and listen to CD. Yeah, uh, better seat. Do you still? Um, uh, do you still see that person in you? You know, yeah. or does that person seem like someone far away? No, it, it's it is far, but like there is times when I'm like, yeah, like I still feel, I still have the itch, you know. But I think at this level or at this stage in the game, I'm like, you know there's a lot more risk versus reward, you know, like, and honestly the reward doesn't feel as good as it used to, you know? And yeah. that's, that's just because I'm like, I'm, I'm not as competitive. I don't want it as bad because I don't know. I just like, I, I think there becomes a certain point when it's like, all right, I've done this before, yeah. you know, like, and what is this going to prove? Like, is this going to prove anything? Like maybe that I can still do it, but like, could I do this? I, I, I don't know. It's just like, it's still in there and I can still feel it burning. And there's times when I'm like, yeah. Is that I why you this. didn't? Cause I feel like you're doing mountain biking, but I, I expected when I started seeing mountain bike stuff, I was like, Oh, well, sorry guys. Nike no, is just so, come to the party. Dude, the mountain bike thing was a complete, like, I wonder if I could, like, it was just more of like a challenge. Got and it. that literally the challenge stemmed from, uh, I rode with all those guys in Santa Cruz. Like, and yeah. I didn't even know at the time, but they were like the dudes. Like yeah. the the dudes of free ride. I was, and I was his name trails, right? Uh, Greg Watts. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. and a lot of those dudes, like Tyler McCall, Cam McCall. Like there was just a lot of guys in the area, like our dog. Um, but like riding with those guys, I hopped on somebody's bike, and I was like, "Oh, this would be fun," you know. Tried a three sixty, crashed. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> hold on a second, let me try it again." Crashed, crashed. I crashed like three or four three sixties. Nothing, just three sixty, like a box size yeah. jump. And I was like, "There's no way." This is good. This this bike is gonna make it so I can't three sixty. Like, are you kidding me? Okay, like same sort of thing. Is like, tell yeah. me I can't. Yeah. Tell tell me why this shouldn't work. 
And so I was like, all right. And so I started riding a more like somebody else's bike. I ordered a dirt jumper from Haro. I was like, oh, this is fun, you know? And then slowly I was like, I wonder, like, could I? Could I make the jump over there and do like – not dominate because I didn't think I was ever going to dominate because they're like Seminook, you know, there's, like there's it's, incredible it's, a, it's, a different sport. it's just like, dude, I, I never had the, the idea that I was just going to take over their sport. Cause I, cause it instantly I was like, I can't even 360 this bike. What, t- what, what is it going to tell me that I can all of a sudden beat these dudes? Right. Yeah. So I was like, all right, but like, could I? And so I decided, yeah, I want to try. How much and time I, do you spend riding those bikes? Yeah. Uh, a lot. Well, okay. at first, at first, no. I was like, oh, okay, like I'll go to this contest. I went to a contest in Austria, and it was my first contest there. Seems like a, you know, that seems like that's not a big commitment. Yeah, yeah, but I was like, all right, and like so, I went and I was like riding. I was feeling pretty he good. Said, yeah, he said no. I went to Austria. Yeah, <laughs> that's where the event was. It was like you had to do these smaller events. Put to the like bike together around. and then put it on a plane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like I went there and I was like feeling pretty good and I was like, all right, yeah, here we go. And then crashed and ended up like. Like, didn't qualify, didn't do anything. I was like, yeah. dang. And that was another humbling experience of like, oh, like, okay, now I want to do this because... Because I sucked at it. I just it. got my ass yeah. handed to yeah. me. But I spent an entire winter just riding those bikes and getting used to it and figuring out like I did so many weird modifications to the bike to make it work for me too. Like I ran the, he put back pegs on that bitch. I did. (laughs) I was doing rocket stuff. Like, but like I had the 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 smallest, you have the opposite of Bontrager. I I had the smallest, lightest (laughs) tires on there because with the ones that like everyone's riding, I couldn't throw like a raw dog double without hitting the front brakes. You say a raw dog double? Raw dog double. Damn son. Yeah. But like I, I did the, dude, there was, I made, oh my God. Nasty. I totally forgot about this. I had my brother Shay make me bar ends out of steel and they went in this far. Solid steel. Why? So my my idea was okay, so. Mass on the bars? Heavier, bigger wheels, right? Greater rotational weight, smaller, lighter bars. Uh, I need more weight on top to counter that because the BMX bike. Does the science check out on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, according Shay, to your, Shay's and NASA. According to your, so NASA, I, your, I, your, your, I, your I actually asked Shay. I was like, "Does this check out?" And he was like, "Yeah." So yeah. I was like, "All right, well, let's make some heavy ass bar ends." Yeah. And so I put those bad boys in to give me more weight and to the, be able to go to the bars. And the raw dog starting. Yeah, and, and it's like so I, I was so is it, it just out of curiosity is like a is a, a no touch double bar is probably pretty insane in the mountain bike so, world. It's so hard, but they don't. Nobody does it. I assume people people do, but it's like it's it's a commitment. Yeah. Okay. Like because that that wheel's so big, right? Dude, yeah. it's moving like this. Yeah. As opposed to BMX, like you know, like you Fairly can run tight, really, yeah. yeah, like you can run everything lighter, and you but your bars are always going to have more weight than just a single, right? Yeah. So it counters like you have a heavier part up here, and this is lighter. It's the opposite for a mountain bike. It's like way heavier in the wheel with like nothing up top. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out ways, and yeah, I spent a whole winter just like committing myself to that, and then got in, and then basically <laughs> was like, all right, well, I want to qualify. I would love to go to. Um, Crankworks in mm-hmm. Whistler and yeah. ride that event. You have to qualify in for it. It's like, you know, the holy grail of all slope style events. And I was like, that was my goal. And so I spent this whole entire year just like going to the smaller contest, trying to get these like wild cards into this diamond level event. And then when you get there, it's like you need to like really produce to like stay in. And I remember I finally got in there and I got an invite or I guess I qualified in to go to Crankworks. And I was like, no way. I'm here. Mm-hmm. I did. That it. took a year? I took uh, a it was well, a season so they, that builds up to it. Too. Yeah, no, but so I mean, like, like about, the time no, you about, started, about a year and a half, right? You t- deciding that you wanted to do this. Yeah, a year and a half. So then I was like, all right, and I got like ninth, and I was like, all right. So the next year, I was like, all I want to do is get back there and do better than ninth. Mm-hmm. That's that was my goal. It's like just better than ninth, under no illusion that I was like, oh, this is I got this. Yeah. Like so then I was You're like, gonna change oh. this shit to Nyquist works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah watch. Um, but like I started doing like I, I got like fifth place and fourth and this and that and I was like no way and you I got, got fourth place at Crankworks. Crankworks. I I went to Crankworks that next year and I had a run that was loose, very loose, but like everything was working. I got down to the last obstacle and it was like you know this it's like a 20, yeah. twenty-two yeah. foot yeah. drop, twenty-two feet out. And it's just gnarly. And I'm, I've never been a hop three guy. I've never been, had good hops or anything like that. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Like, Without like a rider truck or something. Yeah. Like, right? But like, I'm supposed to three this thing. Oh, down. We, it was like a, a drop. Yeah, a drop. Just a flat drop. Got it. And I remember like I didn't do it in practice because I was so nervous. And I was like, all right. And I just did it the last run. And I pulled it. And I remember coming out of that and just being so happy. Just so happy that I did that. And then the score came in. And I was like, 
I got third place. Fuck yeah. I got podium at that the event. Podium? I at podiumed at, at the Crankworks. Yeah. Like, and I was like, wow. Huh. And so at that point, you know, like, I'm like, I feel like I accomplished what I set out to do. Like, yeah. could I do this? And so I was like, I got that. And then, so then I spent another year doing it, but like my brain had already switched. Like I want to ride with BMX again. Mm. Like the, the Olympic stuff is starting to happen. I want, yeah. I kind of want to do that. Like a new shiny toy. I want to yeah. do that. And so I was, but I was already committed to another year. So I was like, one foot in the door of BMX, the other foot still in mountain biking. I had like a couple sponsors that I gained, so they were expecting me to do this. But I was literally just going through the motions of like, all right. But the motions of riding slope style, it's you gnarly. can't just go through the motions. Yeah, like it is yeah. so scary. Yeah, like at any moment you're you're gonna drop from like three or four stories and it's gonna suck. Yeah, you know. And I was like, dude, this is so dumb. And not only that, but I'm to like, be trying, half in. Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. spending, like, like if I'm actually trying to go to the Olympics, it's like, dude, I, I have to be all in here. So I was doing myself a total disservice. Yeah. Like, you know, just spreading myself way too thin thinking. Going, this is both. going back to vert park and dirt all yeah. in the same. Yeah. Yeah. So. But like, I mean the, but yeah, it was just, I don't know. I, 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 I had no idea you got third at Cranksworks. That's either. crazy. Either. I went, you know, I went to that, that one Colorado event. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. I was filming yeah, Drew yeah. for yep. Red Bull yep. and it, it was cool. It was, I think the, I, when I went back, I was like, dude, Nyquist was there. And when they said, they said all these other dudes names that I don't know, like, cause I'm <laughs> so dense. I don't know anybody. <laughs> and, and they said Nyquist name. The place exploded. Yeah, it was like I was gonna ask, how were you received? It was it was uh, insane. Like writers. I don't know who was the number one guy. It, Nyquist was the number one guy. Yeah, so to like that, it was that, it was insane. It was so that that was a hundred percent like, and I didn't even realize that kind of effect yeah. either until I got there because that was I remember that event. I remember yeah. being like, whoa, like why are, why is everybody cheering for me? Like that's yeah. crazy. But it was because all these people that were there riding the mountain with their bikes grew up riding BMX. BMX. Yeah. They grew up watching X Games. Yeah. And so when they heard my name, it was like the kid in them was like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, so I got these loud cheers and I got people like coming up to me like, I can't believe, like, I, I can't believe this is you. I can't, I, I, I grew up watching you. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So I had that carry over such a weird concept, but like, yo, they grew up riding BMX. They grew up watching X Games. They were huge fans of ours and what we were doing. Yeah. And now it's like they're in this whole you, different world. You all started riding mountain bikes at the same yeah, time. Yeah, but it was like, it was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, what are you doing here? I was like, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, oh, this is so sick. And so, yeah, like, I remember that, like being like, yo, that was really loud. Was, so, was that early on in it? Um, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So that was that first year of me trying okay, just to make it to Crankworks. Year. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So after that, you, you got third at Crankworks. That's crazy. Yeah. That like, is unbelievable. That's like one so, of my biggest accomplishments. Well, uh, I feel like little that switch. Yeah. That's what I was going to say is, is, uh, going back to the competitive side, uh, we talked about, you know, that being driven to compete and all that stuff. Which one, which one is your like pinnacle win? Like which, which is your contest win that you're most proud of? I think so. Oh, so this isn't just, this isn't one, but I think when I think of all the things that I was able to do in BMX, there was a series called the Vans triple crown mm -hmm. and that was around for four years. So three events a year for four years, there was 12 events, uh, over the span of that four years, I had won 11 out of the 12 dirt events. Wow. What? So for four years I won, and then you Gutler, were the best. Gutler beat me at the last one. Oh, the very like, last Gosh, one. Gosh, dude, it was like, oh my! I was so like. Was that at the last one? At the very last one. Was that one. when he, the front flip started? And he yep. had that one. Yeah, run and he was, he and, and he, he, that was, was beginning. One run he did. That was the beginning thing. of seven twenty in front flip. Yeah, yeah, that was beginning of his dominance because he had like a year or two where he was dominating too, yeah. and he was just starting to come in his own. And I was like, oh, and I had a couple slip ups, and I was like, that was it. But like eleven out of the twelve for four years straight and i i always look at that as like like i didn't even realize what i was doing at the time yeah but like to do that for that long the span of time i was like and that was one of those where like there was definitely like moments where i was like last run let me figure it out there was one where i was like oh last run i think i'm gonna do a rocket double truck because that seems like it makes sense and in my head i'm like there is absolutely no way that makes sense <laughs> to me now but like that's the confidence of like yeah i got yeah. that all right yeah. so like when it when it matters i'm just gonna do these weird wild tricks that make sense to me you know but like to like to do that for that span of time i'm always super proud of that because i that was just like i, I don't know if if that exists to that level yeah. anymore no. of like consistency 
but like at that high level. And there's guys that are consistent that do it, like Logan Martin, right? Like he, he'll show up to a park event and like he's always a favorite to win or at least do well. Yeah. But like yeah, but I was a, always proud that I was able to do that for like four years. There's is a difference now though, which that the difference between you and them now is now there's like a formula. Kind of, you know, there's like four tricks that those dudes just do the same four tricks in different order. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, but, and no. and I'm not talking yes. bad about it, but I'm saying at your, I feel like because it's all relative to the time. Right? Yeah, but so it's not like a, it's not. I'm not. It's not a negative on them, but I feel like the bag of tricks you have to have then is a different amount. Yes and no, man. Know. Because like, like I see the same effect of what the Superman Seeker I've had back in the day. What do you mean? When when like TJ. Started mm-hmm. doing like massive Superman seat grabs and Cam Birdwell and all those guys. Like, you know, you were stretching them. Ronnie yeah. Chalk. Keggy. Pretty soon, like at the dirt comps, and this is dirt versus park, but like at the dirt comps, everybody was doing a Superman seat grab in the run. It was like the hot trick. And so, yeah, I do see that in park that there's a lot of like similar riding going on. A lot of the guys do it, but there are still guys that have their own style and their own tricks, you know? And so, so it, it's, it's, I see it because I'm like, I'm engulfed in that. Yes. You see, see think, and then from a think... perspective point of view, when I, I know because right at the Olympics, we were down a guy, right? Somebody got hurt, so we were down a male. Yeah, but, and did. then I, in my head watching, I was like, well, if they let Nyquist ride, he wins. <laughs> I'm so glad. Absolutely. No, but I, I'm serious because watching it from a perspective point of view, even though I'm aware of how hard things are, right? It's not like I'm unaware of it. Um, I just know, I'm like, you would have ridden the course very different than they rode because they all, I, there's, a, there's a trend now of how you ride a course. And uh, I feel like, that's been lost somewhere. I think it's just morphed. I think it's changed because because Miro was the guy a long time ago that kind of like really started putting flowy runs together with thought. And yeah. like I said, you were always doing stuff as well. But like I feel like Miro was the one that was always like Miro was doing real stuff, really like <laughs> real or not. It was like he always made it look really flowy, yeah. and really good. And so like I think for me, anyways, I always saw what he was doing. I was like, oh, like that's how you do it, right? Yeah. Like he's the guy that's winning. He's being rewarded. That's what you need to do. I think that those guys, I mean, like, if you think about it, it's like, okay, so Dares was next, Spinner, like, all these guys yeah. kind of filed in on the park scene. And you morph it, like, Dares is still, like, a very influential guy to, like, a lot of the top guys because he was, Oh, like, it, they've all copied Dares. Yeah. But, like, that's yeah. the thing is, like, I, I just think it's morphed. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, like, not everybody doing the same stuff, but it's, like, there's definitely tricks that are popular. And you got to also throw in the fact of, like, social media. Like, you can see people learn stuff. And... That's the crazy part to me is like people are posting everything, oh, everything they're bangers. learning. There's no secrets anymore, yeah. really. But like, okay, well, I just saw him learn it and I have foam and resi access to it. Four so hours like, later, you can learn it. Yeah. And so like for me, it's like that's just a big part of it, too, is like that instant gratification of seeing someone post a trick they just learned and be like, whoa, I want to do that. That's not outside of my realm of being able to do it. And if I do that, that's really cool. Maybe I can do that in a contest. That's just everything kind of morphing. So. Yes, I I see what you're saying about like oh all these four same tricks and stuff, but it's like you can see the differences of the different people doing them because they might do it in different places that are like whoa that was crazy. You yeah, know? but so, I mean to Mike's to to Mike's defense, like X Games Chiba like Logan Martin won it was fucking incredible, but yeah. he did 13 toes. Mm-hmm. So I mean I'm in not, 60 it, seconds, yeah, what I was you know, and they were all di- there was two switch ones, there's three upside yeah. down ones, there's mm-hmm. the there's three it's across the a channel, it four, but it was it was 13 toes. Yeah. you know, and it's like take mm-hmm. it away from anybody because I'm full aware of how gnarly it is. Yeah, but it's 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 strange to me that. That it's morphed into like it's no handers, bar spins, tail whips, and pointers. <clears throat> well, here's it. I mean, and, I, and then any of those combined. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where like, I feel like in your day you had to, as long as you can master those four and those and and, and all versions of it. In your day, you had to compete against people. Like it's a difference between seeing like that and a Hoffman run, where you're like you don't know what is coming out next. Yeah, there's Peacock mm-hmm. in there. You know what so, I mean? Like yeah. you don't know what trick. <laughs> so I and and it's funny. I, something else I wanted to mention that. When you mentioned all those people, you know, it was Googler's time, and then it was Spinner's, and then it was the whoever's. Um, it's still yours, which is... I like how that, much of a super fan he is. I know, but I'm, I'm, I'm not even... I like this, too. Yeah. But I'm, I'm serious. Because like, it, it, uh-huh. it, it, uh-huh. I've been told a million times, like, the new, he's a new dude. He's the new dude. He's the new dude. Because me and you have some of the longest careers in bike riding as a professional. And there's always a new guy that's super good, but... I've, you know, many, I mean, how many guys have you seen being the best dude and then he's gone in four years? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the difference. It happens. Yeah. I There's mean, that's... A difference. I know you, you're you coming from a place because you're you, but coming from someone watching this for so long, you know what I mean? And also coming from a mindset where I can really um, 
understand, I think, your mindset of where you might have been sitting on the deck knowing like, oh, well, I got to send it here. Mm-hmm. I mean, or I don't want to screw this one up because I, if I screw this up, I lose. Watching you do that for so many years, I think you're not giving yourself as much credit. And because I know you respect these new riders and I, it's not to do with them, you know, this is about you. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it's not like it's not like a negative to them. It's like you, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit on how on what you did. You know what I mean? Like that feat is not like, oh yeah, I did it. Oh, or even when you say like, oh, that's something I'm proud of these three years. I don't think you really understand or maybe because I'm listening to you talk, maybe you're just being modest or humble, but it's, it truly is something that no one else has. Well, and like I said, it's you Hoffman, you and Hoffman. I just, I, I never, like I said, I just, all I wanted to do was win and ride my bike and learn tricks. That's, I mean, it's, it was so simple and so basic. That's all I wanted. Mm -hmm. Like truly. And so it's like, okay, well, and I, and I also very firmly believe that like you were, it didn't matter what you did last weekend, what place you got. It just didn't like, I think there's a lot that to be said about building confidence, but like it, it didn't have that effect on me of like, Oh, I got third. It was like, I was never shook. It was just more motivation. Yeah. I was just, it just lit the fire. And so for me, it's like, I never really like, rested on like any kind of like oh these are my results because i knew that that didn't matter on today like if i want to drop in and do this it does, i can't say like well <laughs> you guys saw me do it last week right eh, okay give me yeah. you know like <laughs> call it call it even right it's like no like i have to go in and produce like this like chuck d is going to point at me and i got to go in again it's like that's like someone's going to tell you to go yeah and you have to go and this is your time to prove that you can still do it and that to me was always what I loved about competition because it was like, yo, like you always have to prove yourself. Like, you know, I, like, I just, I don't know. I loved that test. It was a test. Kids or age or anything change that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, there, there was a period of time where like, I just, I don't know. I, I wanted, I wanted different things in my life. You know, Mm -hmm. like the, the competitive edge was still there, but like, you know, like I was getting married. I was talking about having kids and I was like, okay, like this is all stuff that like is time consuming, you know? And, and I know how I wanted to be like as a husband and as a dad, or I had ideas of how I wanted to be, but it was like, Oh, like this, this doesn't mesh well in a lot of ways, you know, like leaving for like, I mean, I, I remember like adding up days I was gone in a year and it'd be like 212. That's you great. Know, like, kids. No, pre-kids. No. Yeah. But that's what I mean. It's like, you know, you have kids, you have a wife, and that's another person. Unless they're going to travel with you everywhere, which wasn't possible. It's like, yo, but like something has to give here. Something has to change because I do want that. I want all of that really bad. Yeah. But like, okay, well, then I have to like do less of this. And so I was. I was doing less of, you know, all the competitions. I used to not say no to a single competition yeah. or an invite to anywhere. I'd be like, cool, yep, done, 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 done. And now it's all of a sudden like, well, you know, like – my wife's pregnant, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go for three weeks, yeah. you know, like, Oh, I'm going to do this or my kids or whatever. So you make, you start making these decisions and yeah, to say like, it didn't affect you like a hundred percent, like, you know, that's a huge part of my life. And I, and one that I didn't want to do half assed either. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well if I want that, then some of this has to change, you know, it, it has to, dra- I mean that, that lifestyle has to drag on you too, the competition lifestyle. Because I mean, I, I talked to Durr somewhere in the last year and he was like, I'm fucked. I don't know if I caught him in a mood, but he's like, I'm over it. Nah, he's just a grumpy old man. Yeah, he is he was, I mean, grumpy. he was saying, he was like, this is it last year, you know, like, yeah, it, like, I don't know if that's true or not because he's still probably going to be in the Olympics next year, but or yeah, whatever I mean, that, that's the thing with Durr is year, like, he's, but, he's another guy that, you know, longevity and, and, you know, having great success. And, and wins and stuff like that like you know it's 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 a tough thing to just give up yeah mm-hmm. because he could just show up to a contest and get podium and be like oh <laughs> still got it yeah. you know like yeah. but he could also just like show up to a contest and have a bad day like that's everybody right so yeah. it's like cash roll a spine and get fucking memed yeah but well, that's yeah. weird right how that just shows up <laughs> in the internet um <laughs> i made this edit of he tried to cash roll a spine and landed like in the oh so what yeah, yeah where the I, I put in some the... heavy metal music yeah, and like yeah, yeah. you know put like some <laughs> atomic explosion and ninja how does he yeah. take that he never even said anything about it. He didn't oh, like so it. So that means he didn't like it. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe. That it, yeah. Not saying something about it is saying, saying something about it. Is it? it? Yes. Ooh, oh, twinsies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's mad at you. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. It was everybody, all, everybody, all else, enjoyed it. everybody else enjoyed it. Yeah, it was hilarious. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, I mean, long story short, yeah, it does, it 100% affects everything I was doing in BMX because it that was 
time needed. I needed time to do that. I needed time to be with my girlfriend, my wife, with my kids. And so, yeah, like it, you take away from whatever is fully consuming your life. I mean, that's yeah. just, you only have so many hours in the day. So how are you going to spend it? Well, I mean, you know, there's only two answers to that question. Yeah. It's what you said or the other one, the other one, which is just, well, it didn't change anything Yeah, because it's all about me, Yeah, you know, but I mean, based how? on everything you've said, you know, like, I mean, that's another thing that like actually Laird, I talked to, I talked to a bunch of people, you know, <laughs> uh, Laird wanted to know, um, because he's like, he said, we wanted me to describe what it's like being one of the most liked and fun loving people in BMX and now dealing with all the Olympic drama. Does your fun-loving personality affect hard decisions when dealing with riders and being a head coach? No, because, I mean, the fun-loving stuff happens appropriately. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I know when you need to be able to sit down and have serious conversations. Like, that's something I learned actually, you know, just living in and being with Mira. Like, he was very professional in a lot of situations, but he was also the dude at the club that could just be, like, goofing around and, and making jokes, right? Mm-hmm. So you, I, I have a very good sense of when I could be like just silly, you know, and do stuff. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, with the Olympics, like that's the Olympics. I'm not yeah. going to mess around with that. You know, like, um, you know, <laughs> you mentioned this is, this is crazy. And like, I, I don't know when it would ever come out, but maybe now it's like, you mentioned like, uh, you know, like, Oh, if Ryan would have dropped in the Olympics, like he would have won. Right. I think so. Like, I, I'm not saying if it would have or whatever, but like, Dude, there was there was a point where I was like, "Hey, we got uh, Sandoval who's not going to make it to, as an alternate. Mm-hmm. Nick Bruce uh, got hurt. Right? Actually, well, this sorry, this is before Nick was even there, but we had two guys and an alternate, and I knew how gnarly and how stressful it was going to be. So anything can happen, right? Like someone might crash. We don't know, but we need an alternate. You have to have that because." Uh, we were also in the best position because the number one country, which was us, we were able to take two riders and everybody else was allowed to take one. So we like kind of doubled our chances of doing well. Yeah. Um, I wanted to continue to have those great odds of like being able to medal. So I was like, we need somebody. We need to have an alternate. Who do we have? And because of COVID and all this stuff, we didn't have anybody. You had to submit this list well ahead of time. Yeah. So like I was like, yo, what? Like we need an alternate. We have to have him. Like, like put me in coach. Okay, well, I'm in so to I, yourself. So I was like, I was like, hey, listen, like I, like I'm not saying that I'm the guy that should go. I want and well, you're gonna be there. But I was like, but I am gonna be credentialed. I'm already in the system. So if we need to have an alternate, then I will. I will step. Why in does America lose a spot? I don't want that. I don't want that. But I also like I know how this looks, right? So I'm like, uh, if it's if it like whatever, like see what the options are. If we can get another guy in there, I don't care who it is, but we need to have someone that can drop in. So then it was like, Oh nope, not possible. And it was also like three days so, before we we're leaving. It's like the plot to top gun too. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> so like, anyways, I was like, all right, I guess we're just not gonna have an alternate. So then fast forward, Nick Bruce during practice crashes, messes up a shore really bad. Like had we had an alternate, we probably would have had an alternate step in because Nick literally couldn't raise his arm. It was horrible actually. Um, but we didn't have a guy. So that would have meant if I was the alternate, I would have been in the Olympics. That would have been amazing. So, okay, okay you would have thought it was amazing. So then uh, in hindsight, okay, first time in the Olympics, who's the coach? Ryan Nyquist. Oh, well, has is Ryan even a top dude? I don't know. He's in. Who made the call? Ryan made the call. <laughs> oh, this seems weird, right? Oh, yeah. all of a sudden, like, oh, this is questionable. I felt like if that would have played out, my integrity, my career, yeah. all that stuff would have gone out the back door because I'm not able, I would have had to like, I would have been dialing your phone over like, being like, can I please explain myself on the podcast? Yeah. Can I please, can we just talk about this? Because dude, it would have looked insane because I would have let it slide. Yeah. <laughs> I would have, I'm telling you, you, the you official dro- committee, you drop in me and, and you rooftop. have a Nyquist run. You won that contest. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, there would have been controversy outside of it. It, it definitely could have been, it could have been interesting. Could have oh, been something to talk about. It could have been, yeah. but like in, in like, and yeah, yeah we, I would have been, t- been talking about American gold. I would have yeah, loved to right. be in the Olympics, and I, that was like my like you know, like a goal of mine, and yeah. it didn't work out. But I was like, dang, like I would not have wanted it to play out the way. How how hard was it for Nick to drop in and just wave that shit off? Horrible. Yeah, it had to horrible. Hurt. Had to hurt. And it was like you know, like every single day he's going to the medics figuring out what he can do, doing the research, they're calling, you know, like you can only do so many medical things at the Olympics because yeah. everything you do, if you get an injection, you have to have it cleared. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many gnarly rules to like, you know, otherwise like people would be like broken and they'd be like, we can prepare him with all the, yeah. you know, but like 
he was doing everything he could and it was like heartbreaking. Yeah. Like the amount of work that those guys were doing to get to that level for such amount of time, the consistency, it was like, dude, like this is, I, I just was like, every, heartbreaking. I, oh, I was giving him yeah. hugs. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't know, even know what to say. Like, and he was just every day hopeful that he was going to drop in and everything, everything was just going to feel better. And then he'd drop in and be like, no, no. no. And I'm like, dude, you whisper in his ear, this could be me. <laughs> no, I was like, I want this to be you. Like, we uh, worked for this. Like, I, yeah, I understand. I, so why didn't Sandoval show up? Um, he got COVID. Um, is that the official? <laughs> is that the official answer or the um, unofficial answer? That's what I got. Yeah, no. I heard different. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy having rooftop on here because I don't have to say it. That's what I got. I heard, yeah. I heard different, which yeah. is it's not my place to say, but just it's my place to say I heard different. <clears throat> okay, uh, but. Uh, <laughs> You should have Sandoval, do, is it Sandoval, do the podcast. He said no last week. He said no. What he did not do the bo- po- to do the podcast. Oh, oh he said no. Yep. How come? Because he, he doesn't want to answer that question. Oh. Well, he, I don't he, know. He, but, but it, it, <laughs> he, he, he produced the test. He did. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people I, did get it at X Games, but he was he was uh, I think he was borderline. But I think he could have. I mean, I think he regardless, it, I don't. At, well, the end at, of the day, at, that, at that time, if you had a negative test, you were not getting on any plane. We had we were testing. Well, yeah, positive test. You mean? Sorry, I, oh, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. He he produced a positive test. Yeah, I, I said negative. No, no, no. Time. Well, I don't know, but the the last thing yeah. he did. So he was positive for COVID but with the test. So. In his defense, if you, whatever the reason, if you don't want to go, don't yeah. have to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, it's enough Olympic talk. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about. Uh, I want to go. I want to go back to uh, not being on the top. Because we talked about winning for four years, mm-hmm. uh, you know, losing, I guess, is is the subject mm-hmm. and, and how you've dealt with that over the years as somebody who has, has been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or did it affect you? Yeah. I mean, it's got to. It's got to. At a certain point, you kind of question a little bit of like, all right, can I still do it? Yeah. And then for me, it was all about like, I don't ever feel like I was the most naturally talented one Mm -hmm. but i i was a really hard worker Mm -hmm. and i was okay with putting in the work and i was okay with doing things that maybe other people didn't have to do or wouldn't do because i knew that that would put me ahead um uh, example i used to go to jc park and would just do over double pegs with the sun's like the sun in my eyes and i couldn't see the coping that's I, ins- I know it's because sometimes you're at an event and you can't see the and I would and I wanted to be prepared for that. That's and so, insane. Like, I would That's do, so funny. I would do things like that because I knew that it would give me a leg up on the competition. Like, yeah. You know, like I and I also like getting to like events where the jumps were so big and and hearing people freak out. Like I loved that. Mm-hmm. I loved it mm-hmm. because I just knew that I was I was going to do whatever it took. Whether I was scared or not, like I knew I could get something done. And if everybody else was scared, then I knew you had a little bit of advantage. I just knew I was going to do more. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you start not having that or you start losing or, or like slipping or whatever it was, or just having bad days. Yeah. Like it, it does. And like, honestly, the later in my career, it would happen more often. Yeah. You know, like I was earlier on, I was able to like rebound and be like, Oh, I got third. I'm angry. Okay. Well, I'm going to put the work in and next time I'm coming with a vengeance and I would get first or second, whatever, like improvement. But like, that was enough. So when you go to these events or you start skipping events, even, you know, like then it's like, Ooh, okay. Like, well, I haven't done this a little bit. So let me see if I can still do it. That automatically I'm like, Oh, I'm not where I need to be. I'm having to spend time reassuring myself that I can still do it and then getting comfortable and then getting there. Whereas like people that were like, in it you know like no kids no family no other obligations they were like just doing it hopping from event to event with full confidence knowing what they could do Mm -hmm. so that was probably it was tough you know but but then again i was still having these reminders that i was still capable you know like still going to events still podium or winning and it was like okay like i can still do it it's just a little bit harder but again i was willing to be in that situation because i wanted a family i wanted this all the stuff that was taking time away I just knew I had to work harder or just take risks that maybe was just a little bit outside of where my shrunken comfort zone were and just keep pushing that back. As you get older, is your comfort zone um, staying the same or is it? No, it's shrunk. shrunk. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of that is because um, 
I just like I don't practice as much as I do. You know that yeah. stuff. Like you know, like well, you have other things you got to do. Yeah, that are equally as important. But it's like you know, like I, I still go out there and I'm like, okay, if I'm nervous about doing like a bar spin flip or like a suicide flip, like there's there's hesitation. But then I'm kind of like at that point in my life where I'm like, dude, I can do this. Like there's no reason why I can't bar spin flip. And then I'll do it and I'll be like, oh okay, yeah, yeah. it's still there. You know, but like those a lot of the tricks that I would have never hesitated on, like now there's hesitation. So again, it's just, I have to take more time to like get to that point where I'm comfortable. Like you're going, you're riding the triples event tomorrow mm -hmm. and it's like, those are big ass jumps. Yeah. Is yeah. there, is there a little fear in there? Or? Yeah. I mean, well there's yeah. hundred percent. There's fear. Are we going to see a power ball this weekend? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but it's just like, you know, I've always been a thoughtful guy. And so if, if I have to like, you know, I don't know. Like there's a way to approach that for mm -hmm. me and whether that's doing tricks that I'm comfortable with to like boost that confidence up. So that way when it comes time to throw it, I have confidence. And to me having confidence, the other stuff will fall in line. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, there's different, I guess, techniques that I could trick myself into <laughs> being comfortable with, but like, you know, yeah. I mean like I, I haven't ridden big dirt jumps in a while. Yeah. So yeah, I, I want to get there and I want to get that first few runs under the belt, you know, like the nerves, all that stuff. But like, do I know that I'm capable of going down a roll and hitting a big jump? Yeah. I know I can still do that. Yeah, like I just haven't done it. So like, yeah, there's a little bit of question of like, what am I capable of? But yeah, I mean like it's when you don't do something all the time, like you used to, like it's going to be harder to, to like yeah. get into it. Like if you didn't edit, I don't know, like edit a video for a year and you sat down and be like, oh shit, what's that command again? Like, I like, you know, I like yeah. how, how, yeah. how winning, how, how riding the biggest jumps in the world is your editing. Yeah, that's um, like that's my that's pinnacle. You, that's my pinnacle. Yeah. yeah. Imagine if yeah. you didn't know how to hit it. I would be psyched. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like, please forget that. Um, Have you been plagued with many injuries? Because I feel like throughout time, I don't really think of you as someone that, who's injured. He had that hand thing. What's the hand thing? Oh, oh my God, was it your bar spin hand? My catch hand. Oh, your catch, catch hand. Oh my God. God. No. Oh my God. Um, that would have been the end of it all. So you can you can kind of see the scar. It's like right there. Okay. But like I can't. I, that's the furthest okay. I can make a fist. Um, I broke it on like a punch in the ground. Nope, that was the sand. <laughs> <laughs> um, I broke it uh, in a park contest in Oregon, um, doing like a 450 transfer, and just my front tire, my back tire hung up, front tire went like this, and just right into the ground and yeah. like compounded. Oh, popped out. Yeah, a little bit, uh -huh. and then black. Um, black. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, got it fixed and then like had some serious scar tissue issues mm -hmm. where it just, it latched onto uh, a tendon and okay. I, and I couldn't make a fist at all. And I was like, okay. So then they had to open it up again. They had to, the incision used to be just like to here and then they opened all the way up to my knuckle, like past it. And they just kept picking the scar tissue out. And so then I woke up and I was like, all right, sweet. And they just told me, it was like, just keep making a fist. And so I was like, done. So like essentially you keep the yeah. tendon gliding and nothing will attach it and Got then you'd be good. So I'll full range of motion. So I was like, yeah, like, baby. Oh yeah, yeah. Like hard fist, right? Well, that scar tissue started to thin and, and thin and thin and thin. And pretty soon I was going to PT and I was like, Hey, uh, I see something moving. And they're like, what, what? And I was like, I see something moving underneath my skin. I shouldn't be able to see anything. And they're yeah. like, no, you don't. You're it's like probably this. I could see the tendon. Yeah. Lighting in this Light. little skin window. Yeah. It was the craziest <laughs> thing. Skindo, by the way, by the way, it's skin skindo. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, the PT was like, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Um, stop making a fist. You've made a fist so hard that it's like literally over your knuckle and starting to thin out. Well, it was already damage done. It eventually opened up. And then I had this like a little bit smaller than a dime sized hole. Oh, damn, dude. You have, you have Jason N's toes for hands. <laughs> I'll take your word Someone for it. Google that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Google Jason N's toes. I had a hole right here where, like, the the doctor was yeah, like, "Oh, it was just disgusting. Just put gauze in there; it'll grow." I was grow like, back. "It's not gonna do that. It's a it's a huge hole." And so I had this like, I mean, you could, you could see the yeah. tendon. Yeah. You could see it. It was I mean, like it does, look, it does look like a fucking toe. Oh, it does look so, like Jason N's toe. so I can't. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I I can't move my. <laughs> Looks like you attached a oh, half a finger like to a toe. Jason ends his big toe on your hand. <laughs> I can't move this out until I lift my finger up, and then it goes. Oh. oh. Wow. Because it's it's stuck. Oh yeah, I see that. So like, I when I'm holding on to handlebars, like this one's always kind of up a little bit. Yeah. I don't really have mm -hmm. like a full grip on that hand. Oh, I have that. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, but it was yeah, like you. Yeah, it was like you had the. He was had a on Instagram. It was like but is that, medical hour. Like look at the inside that, of Ryan Nyquist. Yeah, how long like, did yeah. that take to heal from? Um, seven months. Seven months. And, and is that surgeries. your only really big injury? And in no, I tore my ACL. I okay. got that fixed, then tore it again, and then never fixed it. And that's like I'm going on like thirteen years of not having ACL. But that's pretty good. Three, if you have only three Bro- surgeries. No broken collarbone. Had a mm. surgery for that. Uh, like ankle stuff, scopes. Yeah. Um, so, so, so you had your you had your share. Yeah, I Did mean, injuries like, ever affect. But I mean, as a twenty, mentally? a thirty year professional yeah, but, bike rider, yeah, essentially, I'm, I'm, I'm you're doing pretty fucking. Unfortunate. Yeah. Pretty good. Did, did yeah. injuries ever affect mentally your uh, your game? Coming back from injury is always really, really tough. Yeah. Okay. Really tough, like confidence wise. You it know, was. like because you, you know, like you spend, like I said, like when you don't practice something all the time, you yeah. get like unsure. You get like oh, so you have to work your way back up. Um, and then also like you know that first crash. Yeah. After you have an injury, mm-hmm. God, it's scary. It feels good though, doesn't too. it? It feels good to crash. It feels good to crash, yeah. and you're like, I got it. Some people don't understand that. I'm like, God, I just want to crash on something. Dude, I still, <laughs> I want to crash on something that meant something. I still have moments. That is, that is valid. I still have moments where I'm like, I'll crash, and I'm like, Hell yeah, Hell yeah, Hell yeah. I yeah. can still take a crash. I can still mm-hmm. jump out of a flip, and I'm okay. You know, like, yeah. and I'm like, This is sick because the second that I'm like, Oh, I just put my foot down and I my mean, hip disclosed like what you know whatever it is like yeah. dude that's like i don't really you're 43 that. yeah think about your dad at 43 falling on any of your crashes i think about like dude. regular people that fall down dude, and they fall it's down like, the three stair and they're just it's uh, it's what they're going to talk about for the next 20 years yeah and i'm like dude i, I did that yesterday and the day before that every like, day yeah every day. and i'm like that's crazy i think because i'm on uh on movies you know being stuff man Obviously, like there's veterans, right? And I always think, like somebody asked me once, like, "Do you think you've fallen more than everybody here?" I'm like, "I think I've fallen more than everyone combined." Yeah. In a lifetime, like because you think about, it, they do like a few gags a week, and you're like, <laughs> you think how much you fall on a regular a, day, a session, yeah. a session, yeah. or something where you're trying to learn something. Yeah, like a even if it's not trick. a big fall, but like a tumble out, a run out, a run out, where they add up, and then the day you're like, "Oh my god." Yeah. Um, just, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, funny how falling can be rewarding, though. Like oh, it, oh, it, it is, it is in that sense of just like of. of, of beating like going through the battle yeah. and, then, yeah. and then coming out on top i had a couple of falls yeah. where you know obviously i was elbow pad still i'm like elbow pad knee pad guy but like i yeah. was in shorts and so you had these hard cups and i remember falling and just being like straight to knees and elbows and gliding yeah. across the it's contest skateboarder well, just, sh- just we forever. have we have that clip that's oh, pretty yeah. hilarious Can we so I, I want no, i've i've uh, maybe oh, i'll, maybe I'll put it in i got deep. it where, where what's 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 it might have been from it? anaheim was it it might have been for Anaheim. I feel like it was somewhere. I feel it was Glendale. Well, if you have it, you can cue it. Yeah, uh, maybe. No. Maybe yeah. It was. So uh, it was. Uh, he. It, I'm on the gimbal, <laughs> and I'm have the camera, and he eats shit, and he's literally sliding on all fours, and he just turns and he just smiles, <laughs> and he's literally, and it's like 120 frames a second, like yeah. perfect. No, I'm with how perfectly. How we never with seen him. this clip? No foot cam bar, and I was just like, nope. And then just you know did like a quick that little like nuts, by the way. foot yeah. knees and then elbow, but I'm sliding and yeah I see him in the corner of my eye and I'm like, <laughs> it's hilarious. But it's like I'm like yeah like this is controlled like no. elbow yeah. pads are just taking all the abuse. God, yeah, where it's is good. It? Yeah, it's deep in there. But, you, uh, yeah, I mean I've known because the last couple of years I've had all these issues that have caught up mm-hmm. like my hips and knees and lower back caught up and I was like oh this is this game over. Yeah, and it was. It's only for stuff that was bicycle related. Yeah. Other stuff's fine, but once I got into this position, my body don't know to. And I, I remember falling. I'm like, and I, I fell small, and I was like, oh, that was that was terrible. <laughs> I'm like, am I done? Is that yeah. my la- this is my last crash? Yeah. And I was like, sweating it, dude. I was, it, I was more sad. I, I, I was just as sad that I wasn't gonna be able to crash, that I wasn't gonna be able to ride. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, know, it's, it's a weird reality that you're because you're kind of waiting for that moment that could be there and all possibilities like it, it might be there. Mm-hmm. And then if you take a hard crash, you're like, whew, like the older you get and like, like you know, like my body, I feel I feel good. Like my body feels actually pretty good for the amount of abuse it's taking. Yeah. Um, and still taking. But it's like I, I'm in the back of my head. I was like, what's the crash that's going to be like? Yeah. Risk versus reward. This sucks. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm kind of over it. At least pushing, you know, like, or trying things or, like, scaring yourself. Like, when's that crash? And I, I don't know when it'll be, but, like, I, I imagine it'll hit me, like, a ton of bricks. I mean, I know where it is. For, like, I know you noticed that I, for the last few years, just basically backyard pools. Mm-hmm. And that's why. Because I, I got there. 
I got there where I put my foot down on a jump, on a dirt jump that wasn't very big. You know, it was like a small jump for you, big enough jump for me. I, I overshot it and just, pushed, just kicks down my leg. And my ankle just was like, oh, not anymore, bro. <laughs> yeah. so like my ankle, And I just barely kickstand it down, tapped it down so I didn't fall. And I was like, oh, I'm done for like a couple months. Yeah. And it wasn't anything. And I'm like, oh, that's it. I can't have that again. And so pools, I was like, the farthest I can fall is like this far. <laughs> yeah. And I can still like feel like I'm doing something. And it's sort of, you know what I mean? Like it, yeah. I like it and scares me. And most of all, is, the thing for me that I, most I, I want most is just be able to sit on the deck and... Still yeah. Be, still be like sit on the deck and hang out with everybody and be there and not just be sitting yeah. on the deck. Well, like I know? mean, you mentioned Laird. Like Laird was always like, you know, when the unit was still around and stuff, like he would show up and we'd have these sessions. He's like, yeah, I just like hanging out. Like I yeah. want to ride, but like I just I like being on the deck and just like the camaraderie. Be- and I was like, yeah, dude, like that's a big part of the sport, man. Like, and I, I have a backyard ramp and I don't get a lot of that. So, like, if yeah. I want to go out and ride, sometimes I'm by myself and I'm like, okay. And I've learned that you know. I can do that and it's okay. And I get that, that, that rush or that feeling I get, but like, dude, I miss like the Greenville days. Like I yeah. miss having those people. The on boys. The deck. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a really weird thing. Like you have the, I mean, obviously you have it, but we, we, you've been competing and doing this thing for probably what? Three quarters of your life. Something like that. Yeah. Not a lot of people have said they've done something for three quarters of their life. And your friends are all over the world and your whole life is spent just hanging out with all your mm-hmm. friends doing the thing you love the most yeah and then when you don't have it you're like that's it's a weird thing to miss you know? yeah like imagine like we used to go to the skate park for like six hours but you're really only riding for like maybe two yeah, yeah. <laughs> combined yeah. you're like yeah. but like the other part of it is like oh you're chilling you're talking you know that's like it's just you know that was like the good stuff that's it yeah. and you realize that later when you're like you like people start doing full-time jobs they stop riding and you're like oh this is yeah. lonely i mean yeah. it's got to be weird for you when you get up on the deck and you're going to drop in and you realize that um, there's no one you've ever co- – you didn't compete against t- eight years ago with yeah. or ten years ago. You're the only yeah. one left. Yeah. You just FaceTime Durs real quick and be like, hey, yeah. just, just watch me ride. Can you say something real rude yeah, to me right now? Can you just talk shit in the background while I'm riding <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as I play? Yeah, just as one, I, one headphone in and be like, yeah. what's yo, it, that sucked. What's as I like? play that jump around real uh, quick. <laughs> what's it like going through generations of – because. You know, a lot of people, there's a little bit of bleed over, mm. but like your career is spanned. Yeah, who's the biggest dick totally... in every generation? No, yeah, that's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Totally. You probably have how many how many changes of the guard has there been where you were you never changed? Um, quite a few. I feel like be three, four, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Where you're I... the, 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 the it was a completely different class of people that you weren't competing against five years ago. Yeah, and it's it's oh gosh, yeah. And then four, and then and then there's the park scene, and then the dirt scene, and then you know, like so. There's definitely yeah. There's like, uh, there's a lot of crossover, so, like yeah. of, of you know, like dirt was like. I remember TJ Lavin and I were like, you know, like really tough competitors. Yeah. So like, you, had, you had Lavin, and then yeah. you had probably Stephen Murray, and Stephen you had, Murray, and then you uh, had Gutler, and yep. then you had um. Geez, I mean, who was yeah. your least favorite person to compete there against? There you go. Dude, at one point, TJ Lavin. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I always felt like he was really good at like these little mind tricks. Yeah. And you I look good. You feel good. You feel good. You ride. Well, good. that I actually. That, that's a, I that's, a, that's a, val- a valid statement. Yeah. I used to talk so much shit on that statement when I was a kid because What's before I ever said that. If you look good, you feel good. You feel good. You ride good. You ride good. You live good. So it's like this trick. It's, down so, it's so funny how he knows it off the top. Oh, like, well, I didn't finish. Because TJ finish told it. me that yeah, I was like, yeah. What the fuck you talking about? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, but I was like, yeah, you're right. Because if you show up and you're like, I love this shirt, you know, or like your pads are all fresh. You feel good. Yeah, you feel good, right? So you're instantly like, I'm already I'm, feeling good, right? I never thought about that, but he's 100% right. Yeah. He is, yeah. But I was, when I first heard it, I was like, fucking what? nerd, what? Me, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like something like it's, that. It's like, like that now. Yeah. If it you is. you wake up in the morning, you're like, God, I just look fat and old. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you start looking, feeling better, and looking, and you, you start to feel like, you're like, yeah. today's going to be good. But then, but then you change the light, and those abs kind of yeah. like show up a little bit. You're like, oh. damn, damn, son. Is that my problem? This is going to be a <laughs> good change day. Change the lighting. Change the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> that's the lighting you got here. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what um, we're missing. But yeah, it's either, either the lighting <laughs> or just for men. One or the other. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, yeah. I, I So, TJ was always like a guy that on the deck, he would always like, I'm trying to be focused, and he'd be like, Yo, dude, that run was crazy, huh? What are you gonna do? Like, I no way. Oh yeah, he would. I'm like, I don't know. He's talking about his own run. Yeah. No, 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 not his uh, own run. Oh, like, I thought his like own run. Someone would drop like a, a heavy run. Yeah. Like this. This happened specifically. I remember him doing this to me in Virginia Beach. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, like yeah. There was a PS contest. P- on the PC beach. broke his leg there. Yep. Um. And so we were at these dirt jumps on the beach. The worst dirt jumps I think I've ever ridden Terrible. in my life. And <laughs> he was like, someone did a run. He was like, Yo, that run was pretty good, huh, Ryan? And I'm like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good run. 
<laughs> and he's like, what are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm like, run. I'm like, I don't know. And I would just be like the shortest answer because I was like, yo, dude, I know what you're doing right now. You're trying to knock me out of like my zone, my yeah. psyche. I was like, I don't care. Like, okay, no, I'm not giving you, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm just going to give you the one words. And I'm like literally the whole time just visualizing like double truck, you know, like yeah. 360 this. Da, da, da. And like, he was just like, yo, so what do you like, what do you think it's going to take? What do you, and I was just like, dude. All I wanted to do is like, dude, shut up. Like, just shut up right now. Like, but you think it was purposeful. I kind of feel like it. I kind of feel like it. But like, you know, like, but he was, he was like a dude that, like I said, like all I want to do is win. And he was the guy who was winning and I wanted that. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, like you're the guy, you know, was there a rider that was your most favorite to compete against? Whether it be because it, you were like, oh, I'm going to beat this bitch or because, or or because (laughs) having him on the deck puts you in a mood. That was just a better vibe to be there to make you ride. Better. There, yeah, there was a lot of guys. I, I, you know, like to this day, I, I love having Rob Darden on the deck. Yeah. You know, because he knows my riding, and he also knows like he'll throw these suggestions. You know, like we never had coaches, but Rob was like the closest thing I had to a coach because I could be like, "Yo, dude!" Like literally, be like, "I'm competing against you, but can I tell you my run?" Mm-hmm. And we would converse, and he would tell me sometimes his. Um, but like he would always be like, "Have you thought about this?" And I'm like, "No." That's crazy. And then he would have these suggestions for me to like improve my run or like improve the line. Mm-hmm. This is why this sport is so different than any other. So sport. different, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I loved having him on the deck because also like I mean he invented a bunch of tricks for me. Like he would be like, "Yo, I do this on like the trampoline bike. You should do that because you have front brakes." And like he invented the power ball. Yeah. What is the power ball? Yeah. Cannonball. Cannonball with the with the double bar oh spin. Oh my god! Did and he was that? like, "I did." <laughs> Once? But, no, a bunch. <laughs> That's a, that's the money maker. Yeah. We talked about it on the last podcast. Oh, yeah. Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars he got for the trick. He gives he gives Dor- Darden ten percent. No. Dar- Dar- of- that was one of Darden's questions. By the yeah. way, are we going to see a Powerball this weekend? <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry. sorry I, well, I'd say I say no, but probably no. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, so like you I, did one in the last, well, the one in Texas, no, the COVID year. No, one, no, right? I did no for the cane bar. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like like he is a dude that I, you know like not necessarily competed against. But like I just love having him on the deck. Yeah. You know, it's just a good time. Yeah. And we're comfortable enough and known each other enough and ridden with each other. Like we have all these stories and like you know, it's just like I, I really enjoy having him on the deck, whether it's a session or a contest or whatever. What uh what about like the new generation of stuff? Is there when you've you know, like a dentist or something like kind of that the later generation of stuff? Yeah, gosh, man. Um I feel like with the current generation, there's just I feel like there's guys it's different, man. Like, and it's, it's weird because I'm not competitive with them, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, I'm not really competing against them. Is it them. because you're an adult and they feel like kids? Um, there's some of that, you know, like there's some really young kids out there now that like, you know, I've gone through it, you know, like yeah. I've learned my hard lessons and stuff. And so like, as a coach, I'm like, I would like to give you knowledge, you know? And then there's still times when it's like in one year out the other. And I'm like, ah, uh, and I, I know I was probably at that point at one point I was that kid that just didn't want to listen or didn't want to hear it. Cause I thought this yeah. person, can't not me, but, but like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, I like, all I want to do as a coach is just pass down these lessons so you can excel. Like, mm-hmm. I know it's my job, but like literally like, I feel like I have good knowledge and good experiences. So I could tell you like, don't do that Yeah. or, or do that. So you're, you know? ba- you're, you're, you're there. Darden. I try to be, Yeah. Sure. I try to be, yeah. you know, and actually I bring Darden to the events with me now. Cause I feel like he's, a, he's your hype man, bro. Well, he's a good coach too. Like, and, and so like, I like having, does he get paid like a, like yeah. a, Oh hell yeah. Fuck yeah. 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 So I bring him along because it's like, he works like he looks at courses different than I do. Yeah. yeah. And I like that because like, I might think of things one way and then he'll come in and be like, yo, what did you think about this transfer or starting here? Mm-hmm. So it's, I love having him as like uh kind of like a checks and balances. Yeah. You know, that's why, awesome. that's why I thought you could, would win that contest. The Olympics. Cause Darden, I feel like, because I feel like you would have looked at there, but, yeah, I but I feel like you <laughs> based on everything, you would have looked at that, that course different. And just that alone would have given you an edge. Possibly, you know, a rider that rode, the Olympic course, the way that I felt I would have read it was Declan Brooks. Yeah. He wrote it really, really well and flowy. And I was like watching him do all these big alley of threes and stuff. And I was like, that's what I feel like I would have ridden this course. Like, yeah. <laughs> One more. I got an Olympic question that actually Brian Castillo brings up. <laughs> Brian Castillo. It, yeah. Dang, well, he, 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 I want to see that list after you. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, he, he he thought it was weird that no one brought up that BMX is in the Olympics and it's an Olympic sport and it's not allowed in any skate parks in America. Yeah. Most of them. So it's the one illegal sport. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's allowed at 
certain places. In certain places, but not at all. You know, not like yeah, yeah. There's still not places in San Diego. where it's like yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I uh, I don't think that's. I mean, I think we would hope that the trickle down effect would be like, oh, it's like legit now, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's on the Olympics, but like that really. It's just weird that that was never mentioned. You that know really I mean? comes down to like municipalities and insurance and designers no, I, I, yeah, and stuff. I, understand I mean, you, yeah, but I think a lot of people just don't understand. It. It's like they think, oh, like you know, like you would hope that this would happen, but like it's still like the process of getting a skate park. You know, you have a, someone that designs a park, and if they say. Oh, this is for skateboard. Well, okay. then instantly they're the expert, and it's not it's not safe for bikes, and so then their insurance is going to cover it for bikes, which means that that sign goes out that says no bikes allowed. Yeah. yeah. Even though like we could go in there and it might be the most perfect skate park for us, it's like th- there's a whole process to that that like needs to change. But like, yeah. I mean, I don't know when it's that's going to change. A, it's, it's a crazy old, battle. It's old mentality too, you know. That's, yeah. That yeah. is going away, but it is weird to me. It is. It's. I would have. You would think with it being the Olympics, that would change the mindset of cities. You would hope. I, yeah, I think really it's hope. coming. I'm sure it's I, coming. I think we see like a lot. I mean, I think a, a great step in the right direction is all these pump tracks popping up, yeah. which I love yeah. because it's oh, all awesome. wheels and like, you know, kids can actually get introduced and then at that same pump track, they can start jumping yeah. Yeah. and they can find yeah. the transfer lines. Yeah. Like that's really cool to me. With low risk. Yeah. 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 Um, changing gears a little bit. Talked about all the competitions, talked about the years. Are you like set up? Do you have to do this or is it, if, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. I know, I know your wife has a gym and stuff like that. Like, yeah, are COVID you just great for the gym? I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, are you, are you chilling? No, I, I'm not chilling by any means. And, and I still need to work. And even if I was chilling, I don't know if I'd like be okay with just chilling. Yeah. I but, don't yeah, think but you, there's that's a difference what... between chilling and like, there's a difference between Oh, I'm going to double truck this. And, oh, I have to double truck this. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of in the, like, I think there's part of me that still feels like I have to do this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, that's like a weird struggle because yeah. Do I want to go to this event? Of course I want to go to this event. It's awesome. Yeah. Like I want to be able to compete mm-hmm. and show off what I can do and stuff like that. But like, but want know, and need is two different things. Well, I, and I'd like, you know, the, the sponsorship stuff, like I don't think Haro really cares if I go to these contests anymore. Like, you know, I, I've actually asked them, which I, I, today <laughs> no not today but like i encourage riders to ask their sponsors what they want i yeah. feel like that's a really powerful thing that nobody does like yeah. what do you want me to do and i at one point you know like because the like i said the game changed so many times like you used to just show up and if you won contests you were golden like, yeah. you were set and i was like what do you guys want from me anymore like what do you want me to do because i'm so used to proving myself in the contest but like those there's not a lot of them anymore and like do you even care and what and like i remember them being like wow, thank you. Well, yeah. And so what we want is branded content. What we want is this. So like, I'm still the mindset of like, I want to prove myself like on a, an international stage somewhere yeah. mm-hmm. and that's still in me. But on the other side, I'm like, well, okay. But if they're, if they're just wanting me to do like Instagram stuff with their product or do mentions or repost, like, well, like what's like, should I like, yeah. you know? And so like, yeah. there's, a, there's, there's definitely like, it's been a long ongoing shift of like, okay, like, this like competition stuff, I still want to do it, but like, like what they're asking me to do, like my job isn't necessarily that, Mm -hmm. you know, unless I'm creating content at these events. Does that make it, do you think if you can get past the struggle of wanting this international stage, does that make your job easier or harder? Um, some, a little bit of both because that creative process sometimes runs pretty dry. But you're pretty good at it. I have my moments. Yeah. You're pretty good at it. But like, and most bike riders are not, but it's, man, it's, it is tough because it's like, you know, the the algorithms and stuff like yeah, uh, you're, yeah. you're at the mercy of like but you're, you're you have no control over that yeah but like so yeah i mean like in some senses it's like yeah like i can i think it does make it easier because it's less stress on me to go out there and produce like a contest winning run yeah you know I, I i don't know if that's possible even right now but like you know the fact that they're like yeah i mean it's cool but you know like so if I was to take a trip, like, would it make more sense? Like, you know, I, I piggybacked off this trip and I did a bunch of stuff with Haro specifically because I was like, well, that's what they want, right? Like, let's do some cool stuff. So it's like, yeah, in some ways it makes it easier, but like, there's still that part of me that's like, I want that. Do you, I want that. Yeah. You, you've made a, like a career over contests, mm-hmm. right? And somewhere I made the shift and I made them out of video parts. Yeah. Do you feel like, do you, do you ever feel like you missed out on that? Because you... You don't have a career of video parts. You know, yeah. There's a few, but you don't have a, you know what I mean? For me, my X Games every year was, oh, this next two years, I'm going to film this video. Part. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, 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 do you, I, or do you ever think about it now? Like, oh, maybe I want to put out a video part that's there forever. 30 year. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> There's always like that thought in my mind of like, I still have an ongoing like trick list on my phone yeah. of ideas and stuff. That's awesome. But like, it's just like, okay, you know, realistically, the time it's going to take me to feel comfortable to start totally. trying these things is like, dude, all right. So like, much time. I need like two weeks of just solid writing and feeling good and motivation and, you know, to like get to that level where I like, I want to send it. You said two weeks. Over here, I'm thinking like two years. Yeah. <laughs> in my head. I'm like, well, what? I mean, I, it's crazy because in my head, my perception of it is that you ride your backyard pretty, I mean, I do four or five times every day. I ride it every day. Yeah. No, four, four oh. or five, four or five times a week. Every day. To every I was like, day. No two hour shifts. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do ride it quite a bit. Um, but it's just like, there's a level that I ride back there that, you know, like it's not acceptable if I wanted to film a part. Right. Yeah. So like I can do a suicide double truck and I can film it really nice and stuff, but like, I'm probably not going to put that out because I've been doing that trick for 20 plus years. Yeah. Do you know what I want to see at a Ryan Nyquist? Please tell me. I'm telling you. And this is your, this is your cheat around this issue you're having. Okay. If you need to do, do go be Ryan Nyquist. Just don't do it on any Ryan Nyquist stuff. Go ride obstacles that aren't Ryan Nyquist and just do trying to get me in the streets, not in the streets, but whatever it is, whatever it be trannies or wild trannies all over the world that you can do stuff and just go do your stuff out there. I promise you pool quest is what he's saying. No, no, no. I promise you I I, I'll put money up against it that everyone it it will everyone will be blown away. You put out all my joints. Yeah. You put out a video (laughs) card. No, I don't mean you just go find do it all in trannies, but just find these spots all you over know, the You know, like world. the needle thing, like that photo, that yeah. black and white photo of yeah, you like roasting that needle. Yeah, like you go find those spots and you do Ryan Nyquist on them. You, you go do the Ryan Nyquist on them. That's what I'm going to go doing the Ryan Nyquist. Go do the Ryan Nyquist. Yeah. Go do the Ryan Nyquist. I, pr- I promise you, that video part is what I would, I think a lot of people would love to see. See, because yeah, we see but, Ryan Nyquist <clears throat> on ramps and dirt. But that's that's, that's the whole thing. So like the amount of time it takes to travel yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. So like, at well, you got to make it a priority. Oh yeah, but like, but it's also your legacy, when am bro. I, when, yeah, I'm okay with whatever legacy I have. Oh, the right little now. one you've had so far. Yeah, the tiny one. Yeah, um, jeez. But I, you know, I don't know. So I don't, that, I don't, back, back to your question about the video part stuff. I felt like the the few that I did. So sentence, no, uh, drop sorry. the hammer. I did drop the hammer uh, against the grain, which was Josh Harrington's video. And then end search. Mm-hmm. Um, Sentence to life. Is that what you're about? No, to say? Sentence to life. I, I wasn't. I think I was in, but it was like contest footage. Okay. Um, so against the grain, drop the hammer, and end search. Okay. Those three, I put like a decent amount of time and energy to, and I felt like they were good. Yeah. Um, at the time, it was like you know, I, I felt like there was a, a strong fu- push for like you know, like going to find those obstacles, right? Mm-hmm. Riding unique stuff, and I was kind of riding parks or events, but like. I never, and this is this is gonna sound crazy, but like, I always felt like the contest to be a contest rider was harder, because it was like that test I keep talking about. I was like, I don't have a bunch of tries at this. I have to do this now. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it was always like that was the bigger challenge, was to be able to do it when someone pointed at you and be like, mm-hmm. go. So the 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 video stuff, it was fun, and in a totally different way, a different challenge. And I felt like I kind of experienced the like what it takes to like to actually film a video part with end search that was probably the one that i put the most time into and finding things to ride or doing things differently or really pushing myself outside of comfort zone for that production um so i got a taste of it and i, I don't know if i was like sold enough to be like i want to make that switch i, lo- I love this because it's like it's such a different point. Of, it's such a different mindset. Yeah. Than where I am at. That, I could see. And, I could see. I could see what he's saying though. And I, because I totally it's like, yeah. 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 So, so for me, like the, the the I think what maybe you were feeling was you were searching for that like the setup, and I was searching for the trick that I could do on this kind of not amazing setup, yeah. which was like a box jump yeah. or a dirt jump. But for me, it was like the tricks. Whereas like and during that time of like when I was filming that, like that the setup was like really starting to make. You know, like the street setup, like the unique thing. It was like that was really starting to gain popularity. Whereas, like filming like a ramp part, unless you were doing some yeah, wild stuff, it was like it's unacceptable. Yeah, and so yeah. like so it didn't really fit what I was trying to do. And I was never a street cat. Like I I I dabbled, but like Wait, and your forty year video, that's a video part. What? Oh, the forty forty one or whatever. It yeah. Was? Yeah, I guess it was. That's a video part. Yeah, I I, I did put some time into that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that one too. Okay, sorry, I'm yeah. sorry that just popped in. Yeah, but that, you, and I, that, I, that that's a video. That's a video part for one hundred percent. That's a video part. Is that all in your backyard? 
No, uh, it's no. A, he went around to a bunch of parks and yeah, fully Carolina, filmed it, and it was yeah. it's really well, good. Remember, yeah. we talked about if it's at a park, it doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, but that I mean <laughs> that that whole thing. <laughs> like you watch Scary's video part, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was great. And and it, it's like that took him fucking three or four years. Yeah. Like and and there's a bunch of park footage in there. Oh wait, I'm sorry. The new one, Forever Young. No, I haven't. Oh, oh real cool, dirty. bro. No. And I saw him today. And I'm Brr. sorry, Gary. But hey, I'll be honest. Call it never. Forever. I have never young. Have, I'm, gonna have, te- I'm gonna text it to you right now. I have Gary Youngs and Corey Martinez's that I really really want to watch. Yeah. And I haven't had a chance to. Corey Corey's is great. But Gary's is a culmination. Gary's, Corey's is great. The stuff I've seen of Gary's is good, but I just I'm like those. They're those, both really. They're both really good. Corey, I feel like is just so talented, dude. Like so talented, like everything he does, and like he doesn't give himself credit. He's a modest dude, and Gary is too. And I, I both those guys, I just have a soft spot for. The, the thing about both of them is, is they've come. They're like a. They've come around to where, just what they're doing is just. You just want to see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like everything they do, it just looks good. Mm-hmm. It's not overproduced. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not an overproduced. Trick, Gary's always that had that ability to just yeah, it just looks good. Show up and ride. Well, it's I mean good. that um, that was that was going to be my point is that is that it's a mix of 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 Gary's riding and it's not not every single thing is like brand new. It's mm-hmm. like when you're when you're a legacy rider, you're you know yeah. you think of like uh, somebody like like ends. Like ends doesn't need to do anything new. You just need to do a fucking just, invert. You just want to see ends do it. Yeah, you just yeah. want to see them do it. And, and so I, if you do the, if you do that same fucking four tricks that you did over the hip at the JC Park in End Search, <laughs> and they're filmed sick, yeah, yeah. And people are gonna be like, fuck yeah, yeah. You I, know, I, like I'm, I'm getting I'm getting like feedback of that stuff. Like I can do a suicide no hander and try to dip the front end, and people are like, there it is. There, there it is. yeah. So and I'm that's like, all. That's like, all really? I want to see. Like that's it. That's it. But that, that that's the struggle. Is like I'm like I don't want like I don't want to film that. Like yeah. I can film that the second trick of the day. Like I, I want yeah. the challenge of myself. But yeah, I, but you I do find struggle you with find it. You find a different setup. You find a you find a nice a nice you know double coping spine, and you do it over that six feet out. And it's fucking filmed awesome, yeah. and people are like, mm. like, yeah, like biting I, their bottom lip. I, I you know that. what I mean? Like I see that. Mm, I, Nyquist. You know? Just, like, I think I think I would. It would be more of like an internal struggle of like, ah. Yeah, but I think uh, you got to get. I think you got to get to that point. You got to. I think you. Point. I think you have to get to that point. But I also yeah. think you. You only get to that point once you happen to film a few clips, and you're like, oh, this is. This is rad. Yeah, how, you yeah, know, and, and maybe it doesn't ever feel like that. I, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna have to have a hype man. Yeah, you when I get that, be like, that's it right there. I'd be like, yeah. really? Are you sure? And I have someone send me the me. clip, dude. Yeah, I'll send you a bunch right. of emojis I'll, in I'll, response. I'll, you know, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It'd be a bunch of. It'd be like that wasn't it, Ryan? No, that, yo, yo, Ryan. I that know what you're it. looking for, and that well, you didn't find it. Yeah, go again. Nah, send it to me. <laughs> check, check back in a few months. So I'll, be, I'll send you a bunch of squashes and kissy faces. <laughs> yeah, dude. But, 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 but when you come out with the one after you send it to me, it's gonna be banger. banger yeah, banger. banger. Nah, yeah. but I mean, I think you know, I mean, if you're if you're coming up on 30 years with Harl. You, dude, you have to sell. That's four that. years away. You think, I mean, that's you, not, you uh, that's coming up on it. I mean, if you guys are talking about me just going out and suicide, no winners, yeah, I got this. Yeah, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> if that's all it takes, yeah, I think I can do that. I just sent the video to Gary. <laughs> check this Gary, out, Gary. Check this guy out. <laughs> he just replied, yes. You should, you should not look at this bullshit. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Gary. Hey, do, you, do you want to take some of these questions from some of you? Yes, please. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm uh, kind of waiting. I wasn't sure yeah. if, these, like, well, if mean, you were just that good of like an interviewer that it was like we're halfway through these questions. Oh, I I, I've done. I, I've done. Yeah, okay. These are just the ones I haven't done yet. Oh, wow. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Nice. Uh, He's got like marks I, I worked and him stuff. In. I worked him in. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, so I can take credit for him. See, I only heard Laird's name, so yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I worked him in so I can take credit for him, then I'm going to give them credit for one each. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Cameron Birdwell, he wanted to uh, clear up some stuff. That's been eating at him for uh, oh, decades wait. now. Okay, okay. Um, first of all, shout out to Cameron Birdwell for putting out a video part uh, mm-hmm. in the last year that was yeah. arguably one of the gnarliest video parts yeah, I've ever dude. seen. If Cam can do it, years. you can do it. Yeah, yeah. If, he can, if he can be uh, whatever, some sort of black ops Cam, Apple employee yeah. and put out that video Cam part. Cam has, I mean, still to this day, that mentality and he applies it to his work and everything he does. But yeah. like, he has a mentality of like, like what you're talking like gladiator. Like, yeah, just dude. like, well, a warrior. I, got, I got a 40% chance. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Those odds that's seem a, good. Yeah. And that's what, that's what he, that's what he loves. Dude, I'm into he, it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why some, he, that's why he liked the nothing. Those, to those, guy, those guys showed like? up in my backyard and Cam was like, I want to do a Superman peg wrap. And I was like, no way. Yeah. Like, this is awesome. Yeah. And did it. Yeah. I was like, dang, dude. Some, like, someone told me a quote once and it, I will never not read it. Sometimes, Ryan. Sometimes you got to let them dogs hunt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm. you just got to let them go. Mm. Let them go. See what they come back with. 
<laughs> you know? I thought it was going to be a little more profound no, than that. No, I don't do that. Yeah. Shit. Um, yeah, I was waiting for it, too. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, Not going to lie. Rooftop, a little so, let down by that the one. The dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the yeah. dogs. Yeah. yeah, but like, I know, but like, I, I, would, I think that quote meant something because I was at a point when I was doubting everything. Like you said, you're worried. You're, you're, like, yeah. so, you're like, sometimes you just got to fucking let it go. Darden, yeah. Darden you know? has a quote, very inspirational. Uh, feed him. Feed him. Feed him. Exactly. <laughs> feed him. It's the same thing. Feed him. <laughs> Actually, yeah. there was fill her up again, buddy. Yeah, there was there was a contest I rode recently at Woodward, and it was a C one, and I remember I was like questioning like what I wanted to do, and I was having this moment of like internal struggle, struggle, and I was like, feed him, yeah, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. feed him. That's yeah. exactly that to me. That's the exact <laughs> quote. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, All right, I'm just gonna force feed him right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Right, back to Cameron. Yeah, he would like to know between you guys who did the derp double first double truck. Cameron. Okay. We're solved, Cameron. Yeah. Solved. So you want to talk about rivalries? Yeah. Cam and I, growing up, it was it was like intense. Really? Oh my god. And he was you guys are the same age, but he got he started getting sponsored before you. Oh couple, yeah. Yeah, a couple years. Uh two hip. Two hip, yeah. And he like so we would have these sessions, right? Like, you know, ten people riding the same jump. Like, oh yeah, and then you know, like we all be riding and then warming up and and then two people would just kinda chill out and then there'd be eight and then like two more and then like three more and then pretty much it was just Cam and I. Oh, and just going head to head. <laughs> like a full on competition, a show and, and and it was at the time like I could three sixty, but it wasn't like amazing. I had like three sixty X up or like a big one hander and he started doing trucks and then truck and a half on purpose. And then double trucks, and I was like, I can't hang. Is that is are these raw dogs? Like yeah, it. oh yeah. Oh okay. There was oh, no just putting, sending them. Oh yeah, dude. And it was like at a time where like, dude, the only guy doing double trucks was like DMC. Yeah, he's five forty truck is a snowman, by the way. Is it? Mm -hmm. Is that what oh, it's called? It's snowman. I was always bummed because I, yeah, I got another quote from from DMC. He's like, I can't open jars, but I can still spin the bars. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's a DMC. I was I was hoping because I, we we I we used to try I used to try 720 half bar spins back in the day and I always would call them drunk drivers and then you start doing 720 trucks or whoever Jay yeah. I was wish they would call them drunk drivers yeah that seemed like yeah. the best the so best in the one. in the mountain bike world they do the back trailer 360 bar bar back as drunk drivers oh why I don't know why don't they why don't they honor you I don't think they knew mm. no. remember because in the 90s they were dorks uh, all right let's go on yes. Um, <laughs> it's not me. Oh, it's I lucky. This, this is this is nice because I'm not the negative one. I'm not this being time. negative at all. That's the nice. <laughs> He's like, it was just facts. It was facts. <laughs> it was just facts. It's just it's just the truth. Anybody in the '90s will agree with that. Yeah, but dude, because I mean, you can't you can't. I mean, think about the stuff that happened in BMX early '80s. Yeah, 70s. but I wasn't. A, I was a BMXer, so that makes it. No, that, we're only projecting. Everybody has to find their. We're way. only projecting. That's 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 the grassroots to get you um, where you are now. What do you think? This is this is from Keggy. Because we haven't talked about Keggy much. Because he was yeah. in that. He was in that too. Yeah. What do you think the catalyst for NorCal producing so many multiple gold medalists out of a small group of guys riding a tiny warehouse together, um, meaning the ramp club? Yeah. So I think I think the scene and obviously the talent, and then I think for me, anyways, Joey Garcia winning an X Game gold medal showed it was possible. Hmm. So for me, did scene, he win the first X Games? No. No, he won ninety six. Okay. Yeah. Um. That, but but like I was at work at the Jiffy Market watching X Games and seeing him do it, and I was like, "That's my that's my friend, that's crazy. Like, that's the dude I ride with. I cannot believe this. Like he just won the X Games gold medal, and that to me, like made it possible. It made it real. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. And like that was such a huge moment for all of NorCal. Like amazing. And so like that, and then having obviously a place to ride like the Ramp Club. You know, like mm -hmm. where we would go and it was like our clubhouse, right? Mm -hmm. Like Friday night, hangout, Saturday night. It was just insane. And everybody wanted to do more and to do better. And it was just this atmosphere that was like, dude, this is crazy. Like the stuff that was being learned, thrown down, like it was just, it was nuts. Like, can, you, can you describe the Ramp Club for the people that don't know? So the Ramp Club was a, a warehouse in a, and not that great of a neighborhood of like East San Jose. And uh, surrounded by body shops, mm -hmm. so it was like one bay of like a warehouse. It was district. a small warehouse, two thousand square feet. Maybe. Yeah, and, and honestly, like at the beginning of it was, like, we had to basically start in the parking lot, pedal into the building, and then jump the box back or the manual backwards, and then hit a vert wall, and then jump a box, and you flew outside again. So like <laughs> it wasn't like even contained. Eventually, we got a quarter pipe where like the door would stay 
uh, well, you could open it to get ventilation, but like you could ride all inside. But it was basically, it actually looks very similar to my backyard. Uh, like a, okay. a quarter pipe on one side. I, it was like eight foot, maybe nine. Uh, a box shelf with a spine, double coping spine next to it. And then on the other side was a vert wall to get speed for it. And then there was like a really tight seven foot quarter. At one point there was a like a vert ramp on the, like tucked mm-hmm. into this little alcove. And then there was like a little office where we all hung out. And when I went, there was a vert ramp. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like a very, very you say small place. It wasn't a real vert. It was no, like at ten. That, at, that, at that time, like it was nine or ten. Yeah, nine. nine yeah, the, I, th- I think like nine. Wilkerson had like Wilkerson doing like a ten foot air. Like, what are you going to be doing at forty? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then yeah. Mike was like, Ryan's like a dip. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So what? And the scene is like it's dirt. Yeah, I mean, how long was it around for? Um, for who owned uh, it? Uh, this guy Brian Jackson started it. Okay, and uh, he he was like a vert rider. He was loved, it a business? I mean, yeah, but I think it was more of like a, you know, like his love, his passion, because I don't think it made money. Yeah. It really did. Did you pay to go? Right? Yeah. Yeah. We, okay. there was a couple guys that like basically were like key holders. So you mm-hmm. paid a little bit extra month. So um, you go at any time. Did you have yep, a key? I did. Uh. Yep. So, um, but it was like, you know, I, a couple of times I rode there by myself and it was like, dude, it was like just sketch, you know, riding there by yourself in a warehouse with nobody knows you're there. Yeah. You know, it's like no cell phones, like yeah. nothing like that. Um, so I didn't go there very often by myself. And really it's like the thing that made that place special was the people in it, you know? So it's like without that, it's, you know, like, yeah, it's pretty cool to have access to a skate park, but like without that energy and that vibe and then the, the level of talent, it's like, dude. And you mentioned the sick videos. There's like at the end of one of those things, there's like a raw, like, no, sorry. Back trail has this raw unedited session of just the energy. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, they would put on Slayer. Yeah. And it would just be like rain and blood would come on and be like, people just start like, what? just hitting the ramps. And like, you're like, Oh my God. Like it gives me goosebumps now. Yeah. Cause you would just be like, this is it. I've always wanted a triple truck right now. And, and you would just drop <laughs> in and just fling them and be like, you know, crash and be like, and then your homie would be like, dude, you got it. And you're like, I do. And you hop up there and that's, you know, like everybody's beaten because they knew you're about to do it. And they're getting yeah. hyped up like that stuff. It's just like, dude, like this is Can't gnarly, gnarly. Like, so yeah, like NorCal was like, I mean, just, yeah, it was, I feel so, like that's what made it. It, it sounds like, like a cesspool of like progression in a sense, was, you know, dude, like kind of like, like not, not a training facility, not anything, but just like, ah. dude, it was, I mean, like people can like the S&M team would come up and we would just like be like, it was like, it's showtime. Yeah. Like, let's just do it for no other reason. Just be like, yo, like, let's show them. I feel like I, I went to a contest there. Yeah. It was when the tree was on the ramp. It was, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, a tree was, there was on a the mural. Like a weird oh, mural, okay. But it also all right. had like a thing. Like, a, it was like a root. Mm-hmm. And, did it? Um, Go ahead. I remember I, I jumped. I did whatever I did. I hurt my ankle. And I was so glad. <laughs> like, in, like, thank God. Much, I hurt my ankle. I was like, cool. I don't have to drive this thing. What, when These did it end? Nice. What year? Oh, gosh, man. Um, when it when the San Francisco X Games happened, was it a, was it around? No, no, it, it, okay. it had been gone for a while. Okay, so like I moved to Greenville in '99, and then it was probably around for like maybe a year or two after that. Only maybe. a year or two total. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, like the, the dude that started it, Brian Jackson, like he started because he he loved riding vert. He loved you know yep. like he wasn't. I don't think he was too much of a jumper, but he just liked riding vert, and so he started it and paid for it. And I think it was just like, dude, he was at a stage in his life where he's like, like, I love this place. I love you guys, but like, I just don't think he could do it anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was like, you know, we're a bunch of wild hooligans. Like we were doing stupid stuff yeah. and it was just like, dude, this is a liability. I like, think I remember somebody like sleeping, they were like somebody lived under the ramps or yeah. something too. Yeah. 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 So you, that was the thing. You now text me the Gary Young video. Dude. No, it was a group message. Oh. You and it was just a <laughs> top one. <laughs> Everybody I mean, have techni- this. Te- I mean, technically, you yes. It, bro. You're in it. You're get it. Yeah, everybody, everybody should see of, it. Of, yeah. of like and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> to our text thread. Well, um, Dar- Darden has a question. It's a, it's a good one because it's really interesting. Uh, why did you keep the unit in Greenville open for so many years after you met, moved back to California? Yeah, the whole Greenville. The whole because that must have been there. a massive responsibility and massive um, cost on your part. Yeah. Well, let's, we can talk about the beginning and middle and end of unit because I feel like, I mean, if you got time. Yeah. I yeah. We ain't got shit to do. Um, oh, I'm good. So. <laughs> Only got a three hour drive home. That's the <laughs> I'm sorry. So the unit was uh, a private skate park that I had in Greenville, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, 
amazing. It felt like a, a cement park built out of wood. Like it was a work of art. Nate Wessel and I kind of came up with the design and, uh, yeah, it was it was just it was like beautiful. I remember like standing on the deck at certain places and just looking and being like, "This is like truly a work of art." It was, you know, um, the place was huge. It was like a hundred by a hundred and fifty, like just a big building. Mm-hmm. It was just filled with ramps. That's and all you I made the building, right? Yeah, I had the I bought the land, built the building, and then put the ramps inside. How much money does that cost? <laughs> you, bought the, you bought the land. He bought the yeah. land, the built, and had the building made. Do you still have it? Mm-hmm. Wow, what's in it now? Uh. Dildo know. factory? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm leasing it to somebody. Yeah. Some business yeah. 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 Wow. Um, See, so, I mean, at the time, the land was cheap. Uh, the building. I mean, ballpark. I mean, oh, what? Dude, so, I mean, 600 grand. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, Something that's like a guess. That. Yeah. From Build, back then. Building and land. And, and, ramps. and ramps, and ramps, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I remember like. It's a long time. I mean. Yeah, I, mean I remember getting the wood line. list and like yeah. calling a place and being like, hey, like I had to order a bunch of wood. And it was like, I like I got a price from like home depot or lowe's and i remember i called like the local uh wood place Wholesale or whatever place like, or something, like yeah. smaller than lowe's and yeah. i was like hey i need to order like a lot of wood i'm wondering if you could work with me on the price yeah and he's like yeah well like what's like a lot of wood he's like yeah dude we do this all the time like kind of being like a dick yeah i was like we make like, a fucking fence but okay. i was like no i mean like a lot of wood he's like dude i get it a lot of wood i was like i don't think you do i need six thousand two by sixes <laughs> and he's like Wait, what? I was like, I need 6,000 treated, or no, no, 6,000 two by sixes, two by six by eights. So yeah, I need a lot of wood. And that's just one piece of it, dude. So can you work with me? If I get, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, thank you, man. Like, cool. Like, yeah. It now was, I need 12,000 two by four. Yeah. It was, it was like, dude, okay. Like it was the scale. I remember they dropped off all the wood. At one time. Uh, I mean, it took a while. Yeah. yeah. Truckloads, right? And I remember, like Nate was like, "Dude, you need to you need to get like a pallet jack. We have to be able to move this stuff around." Yeah, because it was like half of the building was just stacks and piles of wood. Yeah, just and he's like, you, "He's like, do you understand what you have right here?" I was like, "I don't know. This is a lot of wood." He's like, "You could build like four very large houses with this." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, well, I don't care. Can, when's it going to be done?" Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can I can I bar spin this stuff yeah. later? <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I had the place built. In, How long does it take? How many bowls can we get for five homes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it took it took a while, and and I like Nate had issues with the crew. Some people left, and it was just like this project that dragged on. And and eventually, I started like swinging the hammer and cutting transitions and layering and like because I was just like, it's not going to get done. Uh, I needed to get done, so I was doing a lot of work too. And I was I was honestly like, I, I, my goal with it. I wanted I wanted everybody to help for obvious reasons to get it done, mm-hmm. but I also wanted them to feel like it was their place. Yeah. Yeah. and like right. if you're invested in it, and, and I never asked anybody for money, but I was like, if you invest your time in this and your energy, then I feel like this Central place ownership. is yours, yeah. you know. And I and I want that because I I don't want this to be like a private facility that is mine, 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 and I can take the key away or I could let, I was like, no, like I want you guys to feel like this is like your home too. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, because I knew at that stage, I was like, I want, I want to ride with my friends. Like I want everybody to ride here and like, I want this place to feel like your own too. So, so you have that. So like the place eventually got done and we had some amazing sessions and like shortly after I moved to California, like my mom got cancer and I was like, okay, well I gotta be there. So Mm -hmm. I moved my wife and I, to California. And so I had the unit. I didn't know how long that was going to last for, you know, like I was just like, okay, we're moving to California to be with her because it was pancreatic cancer. And it was like, she lasted a year and then she passed away. So I was like, okay, I didn't know if I was going to move back. I think in the back of my head, I was like, yeah, I think I could move back to, did you sell your house in North Carolina too? And everything? Yeah. I held on to it for a while. Mm -hmm. I think like five or six months. And I was like, I don't know what year is this. Ooh, this is probably, uh, 2007, 2008. So did you sell before the collapse of the like the real estate market? Um, no, I, I yeah, I sold after. <laughs> all right, because yeah, yeah. I remember I lost money on the house. And okay, I was bombed. yeah, but, all um, right. So, um, so in California, and then slowly realized like, oh no, we're gonna make a life here. You yeah. know, like we're gonna we're gonna set up shop in, so, in California. Yeah, in okay. Northern California. So, um, you know, lived in San Jose, and then eventually settled in Santa Cruz. And so, like during that whole time. I thought in my head, I was like, well, I can, I can still go back to North Carolina and ride the unit. Yeah. And, and you place, loved it. Dude. I, I mean, I, I loved yeah, that place. Yeah. Like, and there did was, you ever get to ride it? 
No. I only got to ride it once, Never and it, it was fucking awesome. Man, it, it was... really, I, 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 I think I did it. I said, said it in the last podcast, but fuck me. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. It really was. It's... And so it was, it, was, it was really hard to, like, think about tearing it down. Yeah. Like, I would get, like, teary-eyed. Yeah. Because I was like, I lo- like, I want this place. Yeah. I, like, for no other reason, because it was just like, dude, that, like, in my head, I was like, this is, like, the, the like, my final, like, big project. And, like, yeah. you know, it's like, like like you have like the friendships and the good times. It's like, you know, like it's very sentimental yeah, and it's like, it's hard to, it's hard to get like, just to be like, okay, we're going to, we're going to do away with it. So I, I held on to it for a long time thinking I could still like travel back there like a few times a year mm-hmm. and ride and that would be worth it. You know? Yeah. And so like, you know, like I pretty much put like Darden in charge of it. So Darden had a key and I was like, just anybody you bring, just make sure they respect it. Like it's on you. you know, Time like, or wear a helmet. I do you remember that? <laughs> he posted a clip of him not wearing a helmet. That was my big rules. Like, yeah, yeah. I think it was on the it was like on the comment or something. Oh, I was, it was, I was like, like wear it was, your helmet. It was like, like dad. It was dad quest. Amazing. Oh yeah. 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 I was I was like, this is not cool, dude. Yeah. Like I'm in California and you're riding my place. Like least you can do is show up with a helmet. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, but I like, I, but I it's also so funny the things you remember. But it's like, also funny yeah. because you turn into that guy. Oh yeah, at hey, 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 Ty's age, you would have been like, "What's the?" What? Yeah, but it, but it's but like that's I mean you know what like the responsibilities of having yeah. stuff like that yeah. like yeah. you know it's like I I was always terrified that someone was gonna come into town and just hurt themselves and yeah. that happened like people yeah. got broke off but like you know like you would hope that they wouldn't bring someone in that would be like yo I'm about to take Ryan for like everything right yeah, now because yeah. I yeah. broke my elbow or did something it's like you know it's like. It's a stressor. I'm oh sure. yeah. And, yeah. And multiple times I was like, dude, I can't like, you know, having kids, I was like, I can't have the, this place can't exist. Anymore. Too much liability. I can't because everything could be taken away from not just me. It's like, Oh, my family now. But like, it still was just like, dude, I I'm having a hard time. So like, I would, I think my way of dealing with it was like, I'm going to list it. I'm going to list it for sale or for lease and I'm gonna see what happens. And dude, nothing happened. Nothing happened for like five years. Whoa. And it that was like, been scary a little bit. well, I was like, well, I mean, I was still, I was still making good money. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to pay into this. I was still making payments on it, all this stuff. And I was like, okay. And I was still like able to, I was go back and stay with Darden and ride for like a week and stuff. And I was like, okay. Um, but it was just like, okay, well now I'm like, I can't even get rid of this place. Yeah. So now it's like turning from like, oh, well I should, but shit now I can't. So I'm like, okay. So then, it's like it's like one of those things, though. You, did you you put the price on it? Did you put the fair price on it? You put it. You put. Oh a price, yeah. Okay. I mean, like, yeah. I didn't. I wasn't like, yeah. If anybody yeah. does want to pay this and you know, yeah, think yeah, about it, it was yeah. like, no. It was like it was it was out there and it was but, like. Marked. Wasn't there there was like logistical problems with it, right? Like yeah. from from another business. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah, you're right. Um, I forget about all this stuff. Yeah. It's so crazy. But like, yeah. So when I was, I guess designing the place, you know, like I didn't really design it, but with the people that were putting the building up, I was like, how big can this place be? How big can I make it? And there was like, you know, like you had to have like a retention pond in the back Mm -hmm. and you had to do this. But like, I was like, I don't want, I just want put a building in with like a garage door and a door. Like what does that cost and how big can I make it? So like, you know, thinking about like, Oh, I want as many ramps as possible. So then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I want to lease this place. So like eventually I did get people to ask and you're like, Oh, well we need a, a garage door on the side, but how would you get to the side of the building? There's no way to, like back a truck up yeah with no loading dock oh oh what about the parking well oh, the parking lot is on top of the septic <laughs> uh oh the septic's only rated for uh this many employees yeah you know and so oh well so now there's all these issues of having a building that you could actually rent out to like a business yeah. that would need a fifteen thousand square foot you know building it's like oh i totally screwed myself yeah so it's wild that that wasn't brought up from the people building the building no, because I, they probably asked me. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> Make what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so yeah. like, so there was. All it's funny. Issues. It goes back to the. It goes back to the deck where he's telling a little kid. He's telling a kid like, and it's just one in one year out the yeah, other, and right. then and then they're like, oh, no, yeah. you should do that. That was yeah. your Daniel, Daniel yeah. Sandoval moment. Yeah, it wasn't. No, <laughs> I don't think actually, it, oh, it wasn't was the Sandoval. Well, yeah, he wasn't yeah, talking yeah. about Sandoval. Uh, okay, but no, yeah, Daniel Daniel's yeah. actually a, a great person to coach. Um, but no, so like I I did it all like yeah. I, I kind of like shot myself. Learn some lessons. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so yeah. So anyways, um, did you make those changes then? Uh, some of them. Yeah. yeah. So like I was able to, to make it work, but, um, so anyways, I'm eventually we, 
decided to move back to North Carolina, but not to Greenville, to Wilmington. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, Wilmington's only two hours, right? So I can, I can go there multiple times in the week, ride, day trip it, come back, right? That was my goal. And this is right around the same time of like, well, that's closer oh, than I am home. yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, like uh, the, the Olympics, like this is all happening. This yeah. is going to be my training facility, uh, right? Yeah. So like now I have foam and resi and all this stuff and like a box, like all these quarter pipes, everything's, dude, I'm, this is all lining you up. You had resi at the, at yeah. the. Really? Oh, okay. Yep. I knew you had I knew you had a foam pit. Foam pit resi I never, box. I never yeah. saw any of that. Because it was it was on the other That's side. So smart of you. Yeah. Yeah. So I separated it. So yeah. smart of you. Um so I'm like, I'm I'm hyped. I'm riding again. Like I'm just I'm loving it, you know. Like I'm like you know, there's still homies there. I'm yeah. riding with Darden, Marcus Tooker, like, you know, like and all of a sudden I get an offer. <laughs> oh. And I'm like, no way. So and I'm like this is legit and it's like multi-year lease and I'm like, dang dude, like financially, like I have to do this for my family. Like this, I've waited five years for this to happen. And if I was to say no right now, is this going to be another five years? And like you said, like deals aren't as strong as they used to be. So yeah. I'm like, writing's on the wall. I have to take this. Yeah. So right as I'm like gearing up to make an Olympic push as an athlete and I'm like, oh yeah, this is it. All of a sudden gone it's gotta go yep fuck so start tearing down <laughs> the ramps i have kindler what? and was... <laughs> ryan corrigan there you know it's like they're the worst job for them is like tearing down this Ugh. beautiful skate park yeah. it's like it hurts like that's what i was and gonna I say that was wood a... underneath was still in such great condition oh it was perfect, perfect dude yeah. there was i didn't ever have to resync a screw not really one dude like they built it and corrigan was like on the crew i think i feel like kindler might have been corrigan's I... my favorite but yeah well, like behind kindler yeah, sorry, but, Ryan. But like, the place was built immaculately. So, anyways, sorry, Nate, too. There's actually like a really oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> there's it's a really cool thing happening right now. So, it, so we tear it down. I label everything, and there's a guy, Kevin, who no lives fucking in a neighboring, way, a neighboring are saying, town. Are you saying he's hold gonna on. Re hold on, hold on, hold on? So, <clears throat> I'm like, I need these ramps out of here, and I had all these thoughts of like you know, renting like a big machinery with a claw and just pulling them down mm -hmm. just because I was like, I don't know. It's, yeah. it's all untreated wood. So it's not going to last in North Carolina outside. Mm -hmm. It's just going to rot in, a, in like a year. It's got to go inside. So I was like, okay. So I, uh, Dan Foley was like, yo, you need to have up Kevin Albrighton and see, he's always wanted a skate park. He's, uh, he's been hitting up, uh, the town of Kinston to get the skate park. And there's all these like old abandoned, like tobacco warehouses, like hit him up. And so I hit him up. I was like, Hey dude, um, I know how this goes with the city. Like they probably told you raise the funds and we'll, we'll find you a place to put it. He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, I, I have a proposal for you. I will give you this entire place. If you take it away, I was like, we'll take it. I'll pay to get it taken apart in a way that like potentially it could get reassembled. Um, I will give it to you skate light, everything like it's yours, but I need you to take it away. He's like, let me let me see what's going on. Did he on. have a time time? Was there time? I, on that? I had a firm time yeah. that I needed them to be out. It needed to be like broom swept and clean for the new tenants. So I was like, listen, I don't know how you do it. If you have friends with trucks and trailers, I was like, I have two forklifts that are gonna be. I here. have six thousand two by sixes. <laughs> yeah, <it's just> like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like I don't I, think you understand. Yeah. That's a lot of wood. <laughs> um but I was like, I'll have two forklifts here, so like you can use those. But I was like if you can take all this stuff away, then it's yours. And so he's like, all right. And he worked it out and he got every single ramp. We labeled it. I have photos still on my phone of it labeled, numbered, all that stuff of how it could be put back together. Obviously it's, it's a huge or undertaking, but it's set up in a way that it could be put back together. So he had a buddy that had, uh, I think it was like a roofing company, but they had these super long flatbeds. Uh, flatbeds, but they had like the warehouse. They had these like multiple warehouses that were super long. They put every single ramp in there so the unit still exists but it's all like just stored and and, and when you say it exists it, like the ramps like not completely disassembled so you have like bowl corners and stuff Eight like that section bowl corners wow. all that stuff yeah coping what did it cost to get that thing taken down it was like 20 grand yeah yeah how long did that take um dude those guys killed it corrigan and, and kimler killed it it probably took two weeks That's they are it. they are actual machines and yeah. this is not like tearing Work down and, no and this and is like, taken apart this is yeah. like delicately as delicate you could like 
cutting between the templates and then and then removing them and dragging them and separating it and then labeling I, and, yeah, yeah like all that stuff like i was doing the labeling and stuff but it was like dude it was it was crazy they killed it like and they worked their asses off and i'm forever thankful because it could have been so much longer but so 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 now kevin has gotten back into finding a place he reposted a video that the news did about like hey like kinston might be getting this like olympic level training facility and so he reposted it and it got like the fire brewing again and so he is now like in like serious talks with like city council about finding a place for the unit wow awesome so there's a i mean i don't like how far away is that from you two hours Same. same 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 yep Wow. Yeah. wow so i'm like dude like what yeah like i'm i'm down to help i still have all the drawings i still have all the stuff like you know like it would be gnarly it would be insane but like if and i put it on him because i was like this is your dream like he's always wanted to have a skate park and so i was like i trust you like all you can do whatever you want if you want to reassemble it a different way but like i'm down to help but like he is doing this and it's like there's momentum gaining yeah. That's awesome. It's momentum gain. And I'm like, dude, th- if this place gets put back together, like this would be incredible. Incredible. So, wow. yeah, uh, uh, well, that's, that's amazing. Well, uh, that's, that's so cool that it ended that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, to be a little bit to be continued and, and, type yeah. thing. Yeah. But yeah it is it's, amazing. it's ongoing. It's, yeah. and, and it has been for a while, but it's just like, it's such, and a, it like, would be a public park. Yeah. And dude. that's what he wants. He's like, he's like, dude, I want to just have this open for the community. I want, you know, he wants to do events there and stuff, but it's like, yeah. he wants like to run programs and like, he wants to do the right thing. Like, yeah, so it's like, man, this is really cool. Well, shout out to Kevin. Yeah, dude. Fuck. I, awesome. ho- I hope. I Kevin hope. Kevin dude, that part. Well, Darden, that was your long answer. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, so, I, oh, yeah. I, I, well, so anyways. I got I got two more questions, but that, 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 so was, that was Darden's question. Darden, I, I, I basically kept it around for the homies. For Darden. Yeah. For the homies yeah. because your, I wasn't for your using it. Man. Yeah. And like, I just, and I, I just had a hard time tearing it down because I, Mira's Warehouse was gone. JC was still there, which has always been an amazing skate park. But I was just like, dude, if if this goes, like, I'm I'm taking something away from so many people that I mm-hmm. care about. And yeah. I was like, you know, I own the place. I'm not paying rent on it. I'm I'm trying to pay it off, so it's all going someplace. But I was like, if I if I take this away, it's like, dude, this is like, it hurt me. Yeah, it hurt me to yeah. think about I, doing I, that to the people that I care I about. I wonder what that did for the sport, keeping it around for. All I people, hope it know? did something for my friends. Like I really do. Like yeah. I, you know, but you know, but I think ultimately, like. You know, it's up with Harrington. I don't know, man. You don't talk to him. I try. Yeah. I talked Shout to him not to too long ago. Yeah. He not shot me some texts. Talks, he shot me some texts a little while ago. I think he but... gets on it and then texts people and then, and then kind of goes away again. But yeah, yeah. I, I hope he's doing good. Yeah. 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 Um, next question. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we I... We're taking, I only got one more and then the yeah. next one is from me. It's sort of related. Um, <laughs> just one's from Joey. Oh, shit. So all the way to the beginning. Dang. Joey was talking about nostalgia a little bit and how he felt about things when I was talking to him and he said that he has a, a front wheel and one of your forks on his bike still that you gave him like 10 years yeah. ago and he said <laughs> it's like the most it's like cherished it's like he's like I've got oh, a piece man. of history now that's cool so he wanted to know if you if you have if you feel any sort of nostalgia towards stuff and you still have your yellow full place helmet and, or you know, is any of those old relics that you have that you won't let go of, I have you know? some I have this helmet that we used to call the spaceman helmet there's no padding in it. I used to have to wear a beanie or two to make it fit. Um, it's it's god awful, but it's amazing because I was like, I need a full face helmet because I'm about to start doing backflips. You know, like uh, I had the fir- the very very first back trail frame, um, uh, like, like number number one. Yeah, like, wow. I had that one. Um, Let me get that for the wall. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's gonna cost cut, like a million dollars to send because the thing's so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Quarter inch dropout, dude. <laughs> Just dinner plate. Um, I do have some things like, like I, I don't display a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my X Games medals are like in this little toolbox, just on somewhere. I think it's like. In you will one well. day. Do you think ever will? Huh? Like, if you ever think ever will, like have an office that just has like one wall. I've been thinking about it lately because there's like honestly the 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 garage is a mess and there's a lot. Like, Yo, your garage has always been a mess. Though. Yeah, I know, but it's extra because all these. All these uh, trophies and stuff through the years. I oh. loved trophies. I loved like the unique, really cool trophies. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so yeah. like certain contests had like really badass ones. The Vance Triple Crowns always had these really amazing trophies. Yeah. 
so I kept them and I, I, I kept a lot of stuff. Like I have some big checks and, um, I don't know, like plaques and medals and stuff. And like, they're all like kind of stored away. And so like lately I've been like, because I want to get the cards cleaned out a little bit, I was like, maybe it would be cool to put some of this stuff like either on the wall of the garage or yeah. somewhere, but it's, I don't know. Like my wife has always been like, you should put stuff up. Like yeah. you should be proud of it. And I was, it's not that I'm not proud of it. It's just like, I just, I, I, I think the drive was always like, like, do you feel like by putting them up, it signifies that that part of your life is over? I don't know if that's like the actual signification, but it, it, it kind of feels like that because I've always, like I said before, like I, I was never like one to look back at what I mm -hmm. did. I was always looking forward at what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so looking at what happened in the past, while it's cool to go down memory lane, it was always just like, well, that doesn't prove that I'm a talented bike rider right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always like I needed. Because you have uh, your goals. Yeah and, yeah, I, yeah, and I was always like, like I said before, it was always like, I don't care what I did last week or last year. It's like, what happens right now? Yeah. So like the trophies and stuff was always kind of like, well, that's cool. And, and one day I'll probably take them out. My kids can you know, play around with X King yeah. medals or whatever. But it's like, you know, it's like, I just, I don't know. It's just, it's always been this weird thing. I was like, I don't really like having trophies on the wall. Like there's literally nothing on the wall in my house that shows that I'm a bike rider. It's, it's I mean, that's. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I don't think. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, but like, so so now it's like I do have this little office space that's attached to like our <clears throat> our bedroom. And I'm like, oh, like maybe I could put something up here. You know, like just some of the cooler trophies, like a couple shelves and put that stuff up or whatever. I one picture in my house that's of me background. So one that Ride gave me, the 20. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, like, yeah. that's it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I, I get it because like I remember like I think this sometime around, you know, 10 years ago or something. Going for shit. That's this crap. Line. I'm like, what is in this unopened envelope? Pull it open. I'm like, it's my world records. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, in that very yeah. day and moment, it's a big deal. And then by the next weekend, you're like, okay, we're on to the next thing. Yeah. Like, I yeah. didn't, I got, must have come in the mail. I'm like, I'll get that later. Yeah. Like, yeah. it wasn't, it just, I never thought about it again. Yeah. For a decade, yeah. And, and, and like, I don't know. It's, there's definitely been stuff that I'm like, yeah. And especially because, like, you know, my middle son, Jameson. Like he seems like he's really passionate about BMX. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this would be cool for him to see. Yeah. Like, and not to be like bragging, but just be like, I think he, I think he, I think he would enjoy just hearing about it, you know, yeah. and like yeah. seeing it. Cause like they know I ride bikes and they know I've been successful, but like, I don't, I don't know if they'll like know, they, they like couldn't, they couldn't understand what it was because I, I don't, I don't ever really talk about it. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, I think they know what I'm doing now. I think they know that, like, I go to the Olympics and I'm a coach and I coach these really talented bike riders and they stop through. Like, you know, like he was he was stoked when the Harlow team threw and like Dennis and Matias were like hanging out with him and high fiving. And I was like, yeah, dude, like. This is awesome. Yeah. I don't think you understand how awesome it is. Like, I don't think you understand how people would fly across the world to hang out with Dennis, like yeah. or Matias or anybody like. But you're in a really cool situation. You know, you know, what's funny is that my four year old. When Dennis left one time, he was like, he's cool about Dennis. And I was like, how do you, he is, that's, but how do you know that's that? A, that's like, a like, natural <laughs> reaction because yeah. there's no, to cool people. There's, yeah. there's, so, so, so like, funny. Yeah. And, and that's a really cool thing because Dennis is cool, but yeah. it's like coming from like a kid where it's like, they don't know what he's but done. But do you like, ever remember yeah. like, it's yeah. really cool. When you're a kid, you'd like a couple uncles, you're like, ones just feel like old people. And there's like the one dude is like, that dude's cool. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> it, it was, was so weird. Last, it's last the first, it's cool. the first time he's ever commented on somebody before yeah. though. And I was like, wow, <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. So, All right. uh, one more question has to do with that. And then I, then I've got nothing more for you. Um, <laughs> okay. This question is because I'm asking you because you're still doing it. You're still in it, right? What's your favorite era for you? And I say that because I feel like guys who... My shoulder doesn't uh, work. You move that closer. Uh, <laughs> um, I feel like guys who have been through it, they always feel like... Everyone always feels like their era is the best. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Cause, because it was the best time of their life probably, you know? But looking back on BMX and being such an integral... Like a, an important part of every... Like generations, what is your favorite for you? And that might, and I'm saying that like, maybe it's because of what was going on, maybe how you love bikes, maybe the um, kind of bike riding it was, uh, or you know, maybe it's the years of the unit, you know, because of that. But uh, which, which one? Oh, man. Um, I feel like the early 2000s, mm -hmm. you know, 2001, two, three. Why, what, what, what was it about it? Um, I feel like uh, I was just in the thick of it. You know, like just like those 212 travel days, you know, like just traveling and competing and meeting new people 
and those insane opportunities were just popping up and you know like partying and hanging out and like just all the stuff that like it was 20 years ago yeah i know it's crazy yeah <laughs> it flew by dude it's crazy flies by but that like that was i mean and i had i had amazing success like there was a year where i think it was 2002 maybe i i i think i won almost every single contest i entered definitely That's dirt insane. dirt i think i lost one but like it was just like you know like i was just immersed it was like everything was bmx it was just so sick it was yeah. awesome like it really was and so I, I feel like those those years were pretty incredible like just because of you know i was just like i said immersed it was just like everything was bmx i like just lived it and breathed it and like it was just so cool awesome yeah. was there was there a time period when like i don't know where where ego got involved you know like you had mtv it was a, it was that mtv cribs year you know, like there's a yeah, day you're like, I, am I famous? I never wanted to do MTV Cribs. I tell the MTV Cribs story. I told yours the other day to my girlfriend. What's yeah. the story? Cri- Crystal Light. Yeah, I think it's the funniest damn thing I oh, ever. Oh, Crystal seen. Light. Yeah. So that 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 opportunity came about, and I remember turning it down. Like the the family, Wasman, yeah. now Wasman, but like, uh, they were like, "Hey, do you want to do MTV Cribs?" And I was like, "Not really." Yeah. And because I was like, I was feeling. At that time, like I was traveling and there was a lot of TV and a lot of stuff. And I was like, this is the, like, the one place that isn't that, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, so I want this. I want this privacy. And they were like, so you don't want to do cribs? And I was like, not really. And they were like, OK. And then they called back. He's like, listen, you should reconsider. And I was like, why? And they're like, because it's MTV Cribs and like it's an amazing opportunity for you to get you know, like all the right reasons. Yeah, right? Like yeah, yeah. You should do this. And I was like, OK, well, I'm going to do it my way. So. I'm, I don't have golden toilets or like these crazy light fixtures or like these crazy cars. So I'm going to do it my way. And they're like, we don't care how you do it. Yeah. Just do it. And I was like, okay. So like, I was like, okay. Like I had Shay Photoshop me into a wall of fame with all these really famous people like Brad Pitt and George Clooney <laughs> on the sets of ocean 11, you know, like Photoshop in the back. I was just one of the boys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like just all these, like in the smoking, the bandit car with, with, you know, Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Like just, that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is all silly stuff. And obviously it's fake, but I was like, yeah, this is, this is kind of what I want. You're you're talking shit on the show, essentially. Uh, Well, I just, I didn't, I didn't, poking, maybe not talking shit, but like, I didn't have that stuff. I didn't have what Cribs was about. Yeah. I was never like, I was never like, uh, I just didn't have like flashy cars and stuff like that. So like, you know, like we did that stuff and yeah, like I opened the fridge and I was like, yeah, like, I think that was actually Winkleman's idea. No way. Yeah. That's amazing. That seems like a Winkleman idea. And he was like, dude, you should do crystal light. And I was like, no way. Yes. And so like, yeah, like the crystal light. Or no, I, I, sorry, the crystal, when you said that, like, I could yeah. hear it in his voice. Yeah. The crystal. Like I was like, I don't even know where to get that. <laughs> Nor do I want it in my fridge because it's probably like a thousand bucks a bottle. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So like, yeah, like I had to find a place that had bottles of crystal light. And then, yeah, that was my thing. I was like, oh yeah, I heard about this crystal. I was like, so. I found it and it was super cheap. It was like a six pack was like four bucks and it's light. So I'm an athlete and I can drink it all I want. Crystal light. But it was just like crystal light. Yeah. yeah but it was well, so like, what, and when the producer, like how, do, how does this work? Like, do they, do you run through like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. Or do they just, they just wing it. Um, it was a lot looser than I re- thought. Like yeah. I thought it was going to be like going. Like, stage. did they know, did they know crystal light was going to come or, or I think, uh, you kind of, there was certain stuff that I, I showed them. So that okay. way they would kind of be prepared to like show it. Right. Okay. So like if you just open a fridge and there's a bunch of stuff, it's like, I, you know, so we did go through certain things and like, uh, like I had like this old Lincoln continental. Right. And I would told him, I was like, well, I made it look like it's like a tailgate, like, and you, there's a stove in there and all this stuff. Yeah. But I was like, but none of it works. So I was like, I need to plug it in this there was a blender yeah <laughs> and i was like i needed to make it look like the blender is like wired in so uh, can we film it because there's an extension cord and they're like oh yeah yeah we'll get that yeah so some stuff did like we yeah. definitely talked through but for the most part it was like i mean like imagine they're going to all these places like they know and, then and it's half like, of it's all rented anyway oh half, yeah but like half I mean, the, yeah half the actual rich around. people but have all the fake shit too yeah mansions yeah. right so like my little house was like oh <laughs> What, what, three bedrooms and then a living room and that's it yeah Called you gotta have to have something to talk about yeah called a day but it, for them it was just like okay done so like we would walk through did they and, seem amused um some of it they were amused um but i i just had like i just remember having this feeling of like this is just what they do yeah and they were going in and knocking the next it out one and yeah. yeah so like it was most of it was one take you didn't really have 
two takes. So we walked through and we talked about it and the, whatever came out, came out and it was like, all right, that's done. And then they went through and they did their like weird zoomy shots yeah. and stuff. And then, roll. and that was it. So it was like the whole thing wasn't very long. Yeah. But yeah, I was just, I was just like, I want to do it my way. I don't want to have like these cool flashy things. Like I just want to do it and be done with it. So <laughs> and it, it turned out, it turned out pretty funny. It's on I mean, I'm YouTube still somewhere. Is it, is it on? Is it's it on YouTube somewhere. somewhere. It's, it's, it it's, it's, I, I felt like it came, it was a good representation of myself. Yeah. So, yeah. I agree. So I, was happy. I think, uh, that's one of the things is like, it, it's, it's funny because you talking about being so competitive, I don't think about you in that sense. You know, I think of blue face Ryan coming out of, <laughs> coming out of the, you know, the car smoking and, and like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like the, the, you know, just like being ridiculous and and yeah. and having fun in between and doing a tooth hanger on a on a on a rail at simple session and stuff like that oh and like God, yeah. and like taking doing things that that made it fun. You know, and when and when the event came about, I felt like that's when the serious part happened. So yeah. it's it's always, but I feel like in the off thing, it, it didn't. I don't know. The competitiveness never never rang for me where I'd see like Nastasio and Stephen Murray and those dudes. And they just look fucking intense the entire time, you know? Yeah, so I, I, I just, like I said, I've always had the ability to kind of turn it on and then turn it off. Yeah. You yeah. know? And like, I, and part of that is because like, you know, like I, I love having fun. Yeah. Like I know everybody does, but like, man, I, I love it. Like, you know, it's just life's too short. So like, yeah, like I can be silly and goofy and whatever. And then if it comes down to being serious, like, you know, if I had to talk about Olympic stuff or like, you know, talk to an athlete, it's like, I can do that. Did you quit fart fighters because of the Olympics? Um, quit what? Fart Fridays. Oh, I've heard all about this. <laughs> You've Where never are heard you? No, 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 no. I've seen it on the internet. But I've heard about it from all your friends about, you know, Laird wanted to know if it originated because apparently he had a fart machine on some trip you were on with you, him and, uh, Mira. Oh yeah, it makes you very uncomfortable. Um, Laird Laird has nerves of steel, um, and it would just do it like, you know, like like in church or something. Yeah, some, just some, like somewhere very inappropriate. I was like, yeah, like very inappropriate, and like I, w I remember it, like yeah, like I remember being like, dude, knock it off, because <laughs> it made me so uncomfortable the times he was doing it, and he was just laughing his ass off. Like Laird is. Laird, you wouldn't know he had teeth because he doesn't smile very often. Yeah. But when he does, it's like, dude, the dude has a really good sense of humor and and just like that, like Brumlow, like yeah. Brumlow level, Dry. like yeah. I don't care, yeah. like I think this is hilarious, I'm gonna do it. And yeah. so that was one of those moments where I was like, yo, dude, this is really uncomfortable, and I'm with you, so like I'm guilt by association. Shout out, shout out to Mike Laird because yeah. he's he's one of the one dudes where it was like his perception and the way yeah. it, that BMX um, portrayed him. And then when I met him, I was like, holy Different fuck, dude. dude, I love you. Yeah. Like he is a, he is an awesome dude. Yeah. Like one of the, like one of the complete one eighties where I didn't think I would like mesh with him very well. And, yeah. and he re and I really did. I yeah, really, I really dude. do. And like that was actually yeah. Winkleman for me. Oh, Winkleman. Winkleman was like, uh, dude, I Best was dude. so intimidated. Best dude. He was one of, he was so my favorite rider. Yeah. Yeah. yeah favorite people that i got yeah. to work with them a ton you know yeah he, and like he I, but like i remember the chicken jam yeah that's he funny. was there yeah and oh my gosh was i so scared of him <laughs> shaved head like you know just yeah. hucking himself it's so weird because i don't have any of that i i never had that dude. he's just he's always just he like, was just, i mean and he was dude. just a beast like yeah. double flips on them some random box do you, do you remember and, do you, you know, you're probably yeah. ohio i don't know like do you remember that way? one in that yard that yeah just tried one and they that's what i mean out. yeah like, but it's just like, dude, like watching all those videos and then the seeing him tire. in person yeah. and then being like, you, you're like an animal. Oh, dude. Like you are an animal yeah. and I don't know, like you're, you're crazy and I, I love it, but I'm also super scared right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. truly like, yeah. Yeah. Um, rest in peace. Call all right. Yeah. 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 Um, you didn't answer the question though. What was the question? Did, did you quit Fart Fridays because oh. you're a representative of the Olympics? No, okay. no, no, no. Why no. did you quit? Um, I, I got questioned on it and by who? By what an was athlete. The, what okay, was the by question? An by an athlete. Um, they questioned my professionalism. Oh, see you question there. Th yeah. Uh, who the, the fuck Olympic? was yeah. it? Just an athlete. Justin a new Dowell. one or an older one? Just Justin an Dowell. Just an athlete. But Justin, Justin Dowell. He said he said Justin Dowell. He said just an athlete, so I'm saying just Justin Dowell. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was it was So he questioned so he questioned your It was it was it was brought up and then it, the conversation extended and 
so I said, all right. And it was kind of like one of these things where I was asking that athlete to do certain things too. Like I was like, okay, well if I'm going to stop doing this because it's unprofessional in your eyes, like so these well are then, Olympic athletes, well then you need to do like what you're going to say. Yeah. So, and so far this athlete has held up their end of the bargain for the most part. So, so. you traded. Huh. Yeah. Well, fuck him. So I just want to ruin Fart Fridays. I, I want to know what we had to trade Fart Fridays for. Just an athlete. But, um, but you know, it's, uh, you know, I, I see both sides, you know, like, I see no, I see no other side. <laughs> I, 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 I see. <laughs> so Fart Friday. I am angry. Fart Friday is a weird thing. It is. It's such a weird thing because people resonate with it so hard. Yeah. Like people love it. Yeah. And I love that they love it because I feel like fart farting is the one thing that's like, dude, I don't care if you're a boy or a girl or a little kid or an old person. It's like, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny. And so. He loves I it. Was, I love it. I do. If Gary, if Gary was here, if Gary was like 100, 100 feet away, he'd be like, it is funny. It, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, dude, I, I've had so many like um, people like be like, hey, dude, I love Fart Friday. <laughs> and I'm like, you do? I do. We watch it. The kids love it. I love it. But uh, like, you know, everybody loves it. I was like, yeah, this is cool. But I've also had some weird ones where it's like, you know, like uh, a mom comes up and is just like, those are awesome. <laughs> Keep farting. Keep farting. Keep, Keep on farting. farting. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. And then I've also had some weird interactions where it's like, dude, I love Fire Fridays. <laughs> so no negative ones. Uh, no, but like, except for this. So I, I did. For, yeah. I did have. Uh, so I took a, a hiatus a while back because I had someone like uh, proposition me. What do you mean? Sexually. What? <laughs> for the farts. What? Yeah. And it freaked me out. How much money? Yeah. It like, freaked me out. How much money? It was like Fart Boy 69. But how, how much, how much, did, you, like how much like, did he want to pay? Uh, <laughs> not enough. Not enough. Wait, what did he want? Did he want you to fart in a bag? or He wanted, was he he wanted, he wanted to fly me out. He wanted to out. get pink eye? He wanted to fly me out. No way. And fart Dude, person. that had to be. Uh, so how I was mean, it? He has to know who he's talking to. Yeah, the fart For Nyquist to fart on you, it's got to be pretty expensive. I don't know. I feel like he's been doing it for free to everyone else. For a long time. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. got to hang out with the man for a so little it, bit. It was, it was pretty uncomfortable. And I was like, this is not what I started Did you for. respond? Uh, no. <laughs> Did not respond, and it actually kind of go in, me. Go in your DMs, search Fart Boy right now, and let me see this. I want to see this message. That was... I don't actually know... If Search Fart. No, it's not going to come up. You're... Every third person that DMs me is like, Fart Boy. <laughs> no, because it's going gonna, it's gonna, to... No, it's going to show up because of username. If his username no, is no, Fart no, Boy. No, 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 no. So, no. Oh. And it's changed since then. Was it Justin Dowell? The <laughs> process <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Um, but that was like, I was like, dude, that's why he made you quit. I was like, dude, this is, this is a little bit next level right now. I don't like this. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 Hey, it's perverts for everything. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Ginger perverts, fart perverts. (laughs) I wasn't into it. (laughs) I was not into it. And it scared me. And I was like, yo, I'm taking a little break. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But like that, that person would comment. I remember them commenting on your different name and it was like so hot. Like just like weird oh. stuff. I'm like, oh, stop. Stop it. Oh, God. Anyways. That, is, that, is, that, took so, yeah. a, that took a turn. So I don't I don't know if Fart Fridays will come back. I'm not sure. I still fart. You should you know what you should I do. Fart, behind the scenes, I'm you, still farting. You know what you should do is do the Instagram subscription and say, Hey, if you oh miss Fart Fridays, God, dude, only farts. Instagram It'll be only, only farts. farts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you make a killing only farts only I farts guarantee it's a site already it probably is <laughs> oh my god that was true belly laughter right there <laughs> <laughs> only farts <laughs> uh, not uh, a bad idea boy I, I mean we probably should just end right on that <laughs> right. all that all that genius right there. stuff and we end with farts did we get through all the questions well you know I'm did gonna you have, have say... any did you have any I mean, no, nah, not really. Okay, I knew cool. it would carry. Fine. I knew it would carry. I mean, I, I'm gonna have to say one. I'm gonna give you one more, one more, uh, one more. Co- uh, you know, compliment. Compliment. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Because you know, I've been. A, I'm a fan. I've been a fan, right? Like I went from not being a fan to being like, oh, this dude's. He's a real deal. To being like now, once I've in about 
2012, I kind of let go of all ego of bike riding, and I can just really enjoy watching, like, the people I enjoy to watch. Um, I mean, and after, and then hearing all this stuff and your 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 journey and everything you've really done, because I don't pay attention. I mean, I don't know that all those contests, you know, because I didn't mm-hmm. go to any of those dirt ones. Dude, when I think of the greatest bike riders of all time, it's it's Matt J, Dave, Matt, Dennis, Day, and Dave, right? Those to me is like the four. That's the four. That will yeah. always be the four to me. Mm. I I think like for me, I, I almost have to feel like you're in there, like you you've, you've you after after realizing how much you've done, you're you're in the contention for being like the undeniably one of the greatest dudes to ever touch a bike. I think so. E- even even if it's for sure accomplishment wise. Uh, so I think. Yeah. Thank you. Um. It's it's different because those guys are my heroes too. That's why it's even for you. But now that I've stepped back and the heroes but, have sort of evened out, you know. But, but they're they're the heroes because I feel like it wasn't necessarily about accomplishments. It was like, dude, like those dudes sent it, mm-hmm. and for nothing, like nothing. Fed them. You know, it's like they were trying to earn their entry fee to the BS. Oh, dude, back. we would go to a contest. Mm-hmm. We drive all the way to Oklahoma, and the first place was four hundred dollars. Yeah, and yet those were the dudes that I remember seeing and like influencing me of like, dude, these guys are badass. Like, so when you talk about like greatest of all time and the, the you know top five greats, it's like th- those guys will forever be that because they they were doing it because they were like like true love. There was nothing else involved. And you like, don't think what you're doing is true love? No, it is, but it's just like I feel like I have like like contest results mm-hmm. like that that's like my i don't know if it's a legacy but like that's what i was always driven towards so like if you look at like yeah how many contests are won yeah like i might be at the top because dirt park mm-hmm. you know like i was hustling at like i said like traveling to all these events and 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 doing well so yeah from that aspect yeah like i might be in there but it's like i those guys are like a whole I don't know, man. And maybe that's because they were my heroes, and like I'll, I don't feel like I'll ever be like on but that. But there's level. a whole generation of kids where you're that for them, and and, that's, I, and, and it's I'm, I'm telling yeah, that as a peer. I don't, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I look. I don't say that easily because I, I mean I'm, I have a pretty good idea what in my head what I really enjoy in BMX, right? Like I, I, I can watch all of it and I can really understand what's hard and what's not, and I can easily say like that might look super hard, but doesn't look like it doesn't interest me mm. you know some stuff doesn't interest me the same way flatline doesn't interest me you know mm. what i mean i just i know it's hard but i don't want to watch it you know um and i i i mean look, thinking about it now and looking at it from like a real honest perspective like i don't see how you're not um one of the names mentioned in that i i think know? i think ryan is like the uh one of the best representations of like uh, for BMX, I mean, Out, I, outside, out, you know, I, I like think the, like the goatee, green goatee takes him out of that. Well, it was blue. Yeah, it was green blue. too. It was yeah. green. Yeah, I mean, blue is the most famous yeah. color, apparently. But, but, uh, I mean, I just think as far as representative of the sport on, on a on a larger level, and and being such a like I don't know, quote unquote like ray of light because you're always so fun and so lighthearted and such like a, a good representative of how much fun you can have on a bike to me. And I, I think that is like, that is your legacy in my opinion, you know, like yeah. I think that's, you don't know, but well, thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. That was there's nice. a, there's a compliment. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's the last one you'll ever get from me. That's fine. <laughs> it's the best one. <laughs> um, no, I appreciate it. And like, yeah, it's just, it's such a weird, like, um, yeah, going from like being so driven to win, yeah, and winning a lot, and uh, you know, I think Losi told me one time he's like, I think you're the most winningest BMX rider of all time, and I was like, okay, and, and <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like to me, I was like, okay, and that was like, that was during the Triple Crown days, yeah, and so like I had wins extend past that and stuff, and it's like okay, and but like you know now it's you know it's like do I want to win a contest? That would be awesome. Yeah. How many wins do you think you have? Think if you won over I think I think hundred contests you think uh, yeah probably yeah I think I think when you get this when Maybe. you get all these trophies out and I think you should put them in a place where you could see them not that you need to put all of them out on the wall and you could step back and like 
absorb it for a little while Maybe. you know i think that i think that would be a cool which is perfect a cool thing have, to do and you, do and you could feel accomplished it would probably just fit all those <laughs> trophies yeah 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 so but like, i mean like the like it's, you may have to kick out the tenants yeah yeah, mm. yeah just for my trophies yeah. <laughs> put another door in to get them all in but yeah like like it's it's like that shift from like wanting to win like so bad to like you know it's like now i don't really have that drive to like want to like i would love to be on podium i think it would yeah. be amazing but it's like you know like that that other side of it of like you know like the coaching stuff like yeah it's there's like rewarding a, it's a lot of reward there and it's like it's weird like it's a weird shift you mm -hmm. know because like you're you're kind of like doing the exact opposite of what i did for so long of like like putting everything into myself and yeah. my craft and you know the commitment in that in that moment of like dropping in and all of a sudden you're doing it for like multiple people and you're I mean, like that's dude that's dude, that's like, fatherhood though that's like life, i feel it like is. that i feel it like is. that is like it you... is but like that existed while i was a father yeah and so like it's like a very strange like yeah. not strange but it's like it's it's interesting how you can like go from like being like i said like you're in it for you and and what you want to achieve to all of a sudden like you're almost as invested in other people yeah it's just because you yeah. love you love the sport i do yeah. so like I all do. those things and that, and, i think encompass it you know becomes yeah. Yeah. one thing yeah and that goes that goes back to what i'm saying is like you are a representative of the sport by putting back into it in so many different ways and that's that's this is just the the olympic stuff is just a continuation of that in my other opinion. than fart fart or fart friday only farts yeah only, only farts. farts yeah yeah was well, that it yeah i think so all you right. want to hang out some more i mean you guys yeah. got to drive 16 hours home yeah. So I apologize. I'm glad we didn't drive That's together. Okay. Yeah. Today I've listened to I've listened because I listened to a good portion of your first podcast today, and then this one. This is the most I've heard you talk in twenty years. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. We've spoken that I've listened to you. Thank Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> thank you. Can you fart real quick? I can actually. Oh, I could probably pee. I, 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 I do have pee, like, I do have questions right for now. you after, after after the mic's off. I do have questions. Oh, for oh. This, is this the bonus footage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Got, got you got a sub for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Thank v3 v3 2024 What's that? episode four episode three in episode 2024 what? i'm saying your third your third podcast oh so. v3 i yeah, think v3. said b3 b3 oh look at flashbacks yeah um, thanks dude yeah someone t i don't know who it was like ask him how he can suck air into his ass and fart on command that's it it's fun <laughs> <laughs> i did i it was it was don't still, not it was still on don't no that's that how in. i ended the napolitan podcast like that was like oh, two episodes ago that was that. that was literally the last question